Shalom. I'm David Yah. Let's pray. Our Abba Yahuwah in the Shamayim heavens, please open our eyes, ears, and hearts to understand your truth for your glory, for your esteem. In Yahusha's name, Amen. Today we got a, a little treat for you here. Abba Yah put on my heart to record the book I wrote called Dave Christian's Helpology. Um, it's available for free. I'll put a link in the description below or in the comments section rather. And um, what we're going to do though is I'm going to read through this. We're going to title this one David Yah Helpology. And as I go through, I will uh, share with you maybe some commentary on what I agree with, what I don't agree with as of today. So let's get started. Dave Christian's Helpology. And that, that is me when I was younger. Um, there is the logo that I had for Helpology. Notice it was a heart with a cross. Um, I don't... I don't do Helpology anymore as far as uh, as an organization. However, I do apply my theory of Helpology on David Yah YouTube. Um, now, share with you a little bit about this logo before we get started. The, um, the heart and the cross. This was back when I used the name Jesus instead of Yahusha. And the heart symbolizes God's love or Yahuwah's love, Elohim's love, Yahuwah's love for us. It also is symbolic of our hearts that he comes and lives inside. When we ask him, when we seek him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and when we uh, ask him into our lives, and when we agree that we're going to repent or turn or change our mind from our evil ways and our sins. And sin means miss the mark. And by the way, the scriptures reveal the definition of sin. Sin is transgression of Torah or the Torah or Yahweh's loving instruction. So we won't know what sin is unless we know the Torah. That's why we need to be back in the Torah, uh, constantly understanding what is appropriate and what isn't, according to Yahuwah, not to man, but to Yahuwah through Yah's word. Now, the cross, of course, is symbolic of Yahusha's death on the cross. Some people believe he died on a stake or a pole. I believe it's both. I believe that it was a pole or a stake in the ground and that there was a cross beam or a piece of wood that they had him carry and then they nailed him to the tree, which is all true. So I think that any, uh, any, um, any book or translation that uses cross, pole, stake, tree, I think they're all correct. Um, I'm drinking, if you're wondering, this is coffee in a glass goblet, and um, I don't know if I recommend coffee even. I mean, if you're going to drink coffee, be careful. It's a highly addictive substance. If it starts to control you, then I would pray and stop. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it's a sin. I think that Yahuwah has created many things on this planet. Well, not the planet, the flat earth plane. And that... Uh, a lot of it has to do with moderation. Well, first and foremost, learning what is clean and unclean, according to Abba Yah. And then from there, let him guide you and have a personal relationship with him and let him tell you if something is clean or unclean, healthy or unhealthy, good or bad for you. Um, so I also, in the coffee, by the way, the, if you're curious, the coffee that I'm drinking is Dunkin' Donuts from the store, 100% Arabica coffee. I filter through it distilled water. And then I use 
honey bee or bee honey, which you'll find on my shop link through the Amazon link under my videos where it says shop. It'll show you the type of bee honey that I highly recommend. It's 100% organic in a glass jar. Um, but uh, that's it. Just um, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I would recommend distilled water and then also bees honey, honey bee. Or, you know, bee. Bees honey, honey from the bees. Um, so back to this logo here. The colors back then were red, white, and blue. White was symbolic of the Holy Spirit, or what we now is known as the Ruach HaKadosh, the dedicated breath, the set-apart spirit or dedicated breath of Yahuwah himself, who comes to live inside you. And by the way, I believe that Yahusha is Yahuwah. And now, looking at that logo, you notice how the cross is in the center of your heart. That was symbolic for when Yahusha comes to live in you, in the center of your life. And then also he surrounds you with his love. And that's what the uh, Ruach HaKadosh does. He seals you with his dedicated breath, his set-apart spirit. He'll seal you and he marks you as his. Now, the red is for the blood of Yahusha, which cleanses us by faith and belief, Amana, in that blood and the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahusha, Yahuwah himself, by having faith and belief in that completed work on the cross. That is what counts us as righteous. We get to put on Yahuwah's righteousness, Yahusha's righteousness by belief in his death, burial, and resurrection. The perfect unspotted lamb, his, his uh, atoning sacrifice for our sins. And then he calls us into a covenant relationship with him at, where we're supposed to now understand what his Torah is, his loving instruction, and obey it to the best of our ability. It's an ever going, ongoing, lifelong process that um, it's just a beautiful relationship to get into. But once you're in this relationship, you won't want any other relationship. And then he'll start to direct you into which relationships our, his will, are his will. And so, yeah, you'll want some other relationships eventually, probably. But what I mean is you, there's no other relationship like this one. It's a, uh, I can't even explain it, really. It's a lifelong, eternal romantic love relationship with your creator. It's so beautiful. It's the purpose for our life. It's why we're here. To um, to fellowship with our creator, Yahuwah, through Yahusha. Now, and the dedicated breath, or the Ruach, HaKadosh. Ruach means breath, Ha is the, and Kodesh is holy, or dedicated, or set apart. So, Ruach HaKadosh, breath, the holy or dedicated, or the dedicated or set apart breath. I say the dedicated breath because we are set apart from the world. At the same time, we are dedicated to Yahusha. Let me clear that. Now, moving right along here, we see that the blue around the heart was for the water of baptism or the migbah tavala, the immersion. The, it's a dipping immersion up and down in the water where no one touches you. You are dipped by Yahuwah himself, Yahusha, the Ruach HaKadosh, and then you come up out of the water, having been fully immersed, and you are it's symbolic of being cleansed of your sins spiritually. And so that's what that logo meant. It's a decent logo. Um, but then Yahuwah started showing me that uh, he had me go through a lot of things. Now the 
the logo he has me using for um, David Yao YouTube is simply that logo there where it's a crop. Well, it's really, it's the Tau, or some people say the Tav. It's the, from the Aleph Beit, the Aramaic Hebrew. It's crossed sticks. It's Yahuwah's mark. And so that's uh, the very simple, it looks like a plus sign or a, or a cross. Um, but I believe that uh, in Yahuwah's economy, what that is so much deeper than that. There's the horizon. There's the pole he was crucified to. And there's also the crossbar that he carried hidden in all that, in that logo. And, uh, you know, there's no way to know for sure right now, but over time, I, you know, he'll show us later. It's not, um, it's not that we have to believe that to be saved, um, but we do need to believe in the scriptures and we need to believe in his death, burial, and resurrection and that he is Yah or Yahusha is Yahuwah, that he, he is God or Elohim, and that his sacrifice can pay for our sins as the perfect spotless lamb. And continuing along, helpology, the word itself was, I defined it as, the biblical and scientific study of the world's most helpful products and services. Today, I would find, define it as the scriptural and scientific study of the world's most helpful products and services. And I do helpology still. I just don't really call it helpology. It's really just uh, scriptural, if you want to say Christianity, but I don't subscribe to Christianity, Judaism, or Muslim, or any world religion. I believe there's some truth in all of them and some lies in all of them. And so it's uh, important that we come out from her, my people, come out from any world deception because it's headed up by Satan, Hashitan. And so continuing along, let's see what I used to think back then with Helpology when I was known as Dave Christian, which by the way, I was born Peter Lewis Dominic Ficini, and we'll see that in this book, and then Yahuwah. Back then, Jesus had me change my name to David Christian legally and then go by Dave Christian. And then a few months back, Yahuwah through Yahusha and the Ruach HaKadosh called me out from everything of the world and told me to change my name to David Yah. It's not legally changed, but I do identify myself and go by David Yah. Although my legal name is still David Christian, I um, my spiritual name or my given name from my creator today is David Yah. Now let's continue with the reading. Helpology, Dave Christian's Helpology. Can one book help save you and the people you love time, energy, and money for free? Dear friend, a friend is someone you know, like, and trust. Someone who wants to help you. Hi, this is Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology, where we teach you how to, sell, how to help save the people you love time, energy, and money for free by using Helpology, the study of the world's most helpful products and services. So how do you help the people you love? either improve their lives, their business or career, or any part of their personal or professional life, and how do you help them do it for free? Whether as a friend, spouse, parent, teacher, student, business owner, or employee, how do you help save people, rather help save people, oh look, there's an error here. Um, how do you help save people, the people you love? <laughs> so look how, you know, I didn't even notice that and I had proofread it so many times in the past. Amazing. So let's look at that. How do you help save the people you love time, energy, and money for free? 
In your free Helpology training, I want to teach you how to apply Helpology to every area of your life. All you have to do is just enter your name and information at helpology.org. By the way, that website, I, I don't have it anymore. Today, I would say all you have to do is uh, subscribe to David Yah on YouTube. I'm going to give you free Helpology. I'm going to give you your free Helpology ebook, newsletter, and training videos on how to apply Helpology to help save the people you love time, energy, and money for free. And so I guess in a way, I'm going to give you this free Helpology ebook right now through this recording. Um, the link should be there still, too, where you can you know download it. But just remember, I don't subscribe to everything in it anymore. So you'd want to watch this video. Uh, newsletter, there is no newsletter. See, so I made myself a liar by even writing this back then. Now, the training videos, they're going to be on David Yao YouTube. And they're not really training videos, although you could say that they are. Um, you're going to find that what I recommend is the scriptures, the Etzefer. And so, and how to apply Helpology to help save the people you love, time, energy, and money for free. Notice how it says, help save the people you love. I, Yahoo I had me put that in there specifically. Instead of, uh, instead of to help save, or instead of to help the people you love save time, energy, and money, Yah told me to put help save the people you love. And it could be said, these are both true statements. You can't save anybody. Yahuwah does that. At the same time, you can help them come to know Yahuwah and then, in a sense, help them get saved by letting Yahuwah work through you. But it's not really you doing it, it's Yahuwah. So, on the one hand, you could say, you don't save anyone, that's true. At the other hand, the other hand you can say that, well, you do help save people by letting Yahuwah live through you. And then we continue. But first, I'm going to teach you one of the most helpful things I know. Right now, I'm going to teach you how to solve any problem in your life by answering Helpology's basic thinking tool called The Question. From now on, whenever you need to solve even the smallest problem in your life, keep answering The Question. Um... This still works, actually. If you want to do things in your life without Yahuwah, if you want to, let's say, for example, if you want to be an atheist, which I don't recommend, but let's say you're, you're, you know, you're an atheist. Test this question out. I think you'll find it to be one of the most effective problem-solving or thinking tools ever created by man. And it goes like this. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works. For example, if you need to clean your teeth, keep answering the question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works to clean my teeth? Or if you want to write a book, keep answering the question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works to write a book? Or, if you want to help as many people as possible, keep answering the question, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works to help as many people as possible? Test it yourself. I guarantee you'll discover answering the question is proven to help save you and the people you love time, energy, and money for free. In your free Helpology training, I'll show you exactly how to apply Helpology in different ways as a friend, spouse, parent, teacher, student, business owner, or employee. So, throughout this training, what you're really opting in for is what everyone wants to know. How to help save the people you love time, energy, and money for free by using Helpology. 
the study of the world's most helpful products and services. Now, I've been really blessed in, that in my first 12 months as a helpology expert, I've helped save hundreds of the people I love an amazing amount of time, energy, and money for free. How do I do all that? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you through your free Helpology ebook, newsletter, and training videos. A friend is someone you know, like, and trust. Someone who wants to help you. All you have to do to get started for free is enter your name and email at helpology.org. But again, I would say today, subscribe to David Yah YouTube. I'll see you on the other side. To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. Post postscript, keep answering the question, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Now, what I would recommend doing today is testing that. Do it in your own strength first and see what you come up with. And then, like a good scientist, empirical study, test it by asking Yahuwah to give you his wisdom. And I think you'll find when you do that, for example, instead of just saying, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Pray and say something like this. Abba Yahuwah. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works to do whatever it is I'm trying to do? And then let him give you answers. His wisdom is going to be amazing. You're going to come up with ideas that you are going to know they're not your ideas. Um, it's just beautiful. Some of the things that, you'll, that he'll give you, it's to glorify him. He's going to use you to glorify himself. And by answering, asking and answering, by praying and asking him, asking Abba Yah or Abba Yahuwah. Oh, I just, you're, you're in for an, quite an adventure. I, I can guarantee that. Um, because the scriptures say in James, um, if any man asks, if any man seeks wisdom, let him ask of Yahuwah who gives to all men liberally and without, appro without reproach and upbraideth not. And so I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have it memorized. Um, but that's just, uh, you're going to see that when you want wisdom, the scriptures start to teach you what true wisdom is. Fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so if you don't have the, uh, a fear or respect or a reverence or a healthy fear of Yahuwah, the scriptures declare that you don't even have any true wisdom yet. And so let's continue. Contents. One, the Dave Christian story, page six. Two, introducing helpology, page 59. Three, the true meaning of life, page 66. Four, Helpology Beliefs, page 72. Five, Plan A, page 74. Six, Plan B, page 78. Seven, References, page 82. Eight, Appendices, page 84. Nine, Endorsements, page 86. Ten, Share This Ebook with Others, page 87. One, The Dave Christian Story. Please allow me to share with you my amazing true life story. I was born Peter Louis Dominic Faccini in Detroit, Michigan, December 10th, 1969. I'm an Italian American raised Roman Catholic in the Detroit suburb of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Good boy. I've always been very curious, searching for truth, love, and the meaning of life. Growing up, I attended St. Michael's Catholic Church in Sterling Heights, Michigan, almost every Sunday. 
even whenever I used to play the game Dungeons and Dragons with my brother. I always wanted to be a lawful good paladin, a holy knight crusading in the name of good and order so I could destroy evil. Now, of course, I don't recommend Dungeons and Dragons now. That's a very satanic game. Uh, I also read hundreds of books, including the entire Bible, but I didn't really understand or believe it. And since in public schools I was taught evolution, secular humanism, and moral relativism, I didn't even believe God existed. In fact, I was basically brainwashed to believe the Bible was nothing but a bunch of man-made fairy tales, and atheism, rather atheism, was scientifically proven to be true. Little did I know, the Bible is the best-selling book of all time, with over 6 billion copies printed, sold, or distributed in over 2,200 languages. In fact, it is so popular, the New York Times bestseller lists do not even track the Bible anymore, because it would always be number one on almost every list. Also, no one educated me on the amazing, true history of how the United States of America was founded by applying the Bible. Like in the eye-opening documentary, The American Heritage Series by David Barton. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ or Hamashiach, Colossians 2.8. Now that version, I believe, was the NLT, the New Living Translation, which I don't recommend. Um, I recommend the Sefer. Facini family. Although our family of five loved and respected each other very much, I often felt I was missing something. Now, there's my mother on the left. My brother, Roger Facini, is there in the center. Below him is me. Peter Ficini, my father Roger Ficini to the right, and my sister Rachel Ficini. And now, just in case you're wondering, there's a lot of transgender information going around, which there's a lot of the elites and Satanists, they will invert their genders uh, from birth oftentimes, because Satan does things in reverse. And uh, just so you know, um, I'm giving you my word that I am not a transgender. This is my uh, male digit ratio here. If you'll notice, my ring finger is longer than my f uh, index finger. I'm a born male. Now, if some of you are hearing this for the first time, you might think this is kind of weird that I'm doing that. But uh, research it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, my my mother is a female, my father is a male, my brother Roger is a male, I am a male, and my sister was born female. Satanists don't run in my family. Now, uh, again, I'll read the sub, the caption there. Left to right, Patricia Ficini, maiden name Zerbo, my mother, Roger Ficini Jr., my older brother, me, David, Dave, Christian, now David, yeah. Formerly Peter, Pete, Louis Dominic Ficini, Roger Ficini Sr., my father, and Rachel Ficini, my younger sister. Now, my mother's still alive as of today. My father died a few years back, a couple years back, two to three years back. And uh, my brother's still alive, lives in California. My sister lives here in Michigan. And I live here in Michigan right now. Um, I'm in Clinton, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. I can remember trying to always improve myself, hoping to learn, rather, hoping to earn love and respect from everyone around me. Teen Rebel, at age 15, I tried to fill the emptiness I felt inside by hanging out with friends, smoking cigarettes, and drinking alcohol. Like most kids, I wanted to be accepted and respected by my new companions. But my so-called friends soon encouraged me 
to smoke marijuana and take many other harmful drugs. And if you're wondering today, I don't know that the scriptures necessarily speak against Yahuwah's uh, made um, herb of marijuana. At the same time, I would be very cautious with it because the form that it's often found in today is not the form that Yahuwah created it in. Um, so that's something you have to pray about and ask Yahuwah if it's appropriate for you. I would certainly not rec I would certainly recommend marijuana over any man-made chemical if you need pain relief. I certainly wouldn't recommend um, man-made alcohol other than uh, organic wine. Um, I wouldn't recommend any medicines from uh, the pharmacia or the pharmacists. Uh, at the same time, I, I can't go ahead and say I recommend marijuana per se, because oftentimes you'll find it is not in the form that Yahuwah created it. And also, you don't find really in the scriptures anyone smoking and inhaling Yahuwah's plants. Um, incense is burned, yes. And so, but it's not like, you know, they're rolling it up into a joint and smoking it. Um, if anything, it would have been eaten or, you know, as an edible. And so that's something to pray about. But um, I'm not dogmatic in saying, you know, I'm totally against marijuana uh, because I'm not totally against anything that Yahuwah created. And if he calls something clean um, or if he created something and calls it clean in the scriptures, I am for it. It's just one of those things that... Um, I don't uh, say one way or the other. That's something between you and Yahweh. You're going to have to find out if it's appropriate. Now, if you're wondering if I use marijuana today, as of today, right now, no, I don't. I have in the past when I had cancer. It was it was a godsend or a sent by Elohim, Yahweh, to help me, and I it, I believe it did help uh, purify me of of cancer through a miracle through Yahweh. He uh, cleansed me of rectal cancer. When they went to go operate on it, they couldn't find it. It was a six-inch tumor that disappeared. Um, but I believe Yahuwah had it like pass through me and come out one time. Um, but the thing is, is um, and I mean come out when I went to the bathroom. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, then for a while there, I was still using marijuana afterward. But then Yahuwah had me complete it quickly, completely so that there would be nothing that uh, ruled over me. And then he started giving me tremendous revelation, and that's when I came to know his name and different things like that. Uh, very important revelations that I don't know that I would have gotten if I was on marijuana. Uh, but now today, if I were to take marijuana, I would make sure I did it legally. I would get a license first. And then... I would be very prayerful about it to make sure that the form I'm taking it in, if it's uh, appropriate, according to Yah. And so that's just a caution I give you. Um, at the same time, I wouldn't let man brainwash you into taking things that man has created at the expense of foregoing natural cures for pain or suffering uh, and uh, cancer and things like that. But now, be aware that it also is a gateway drug, meaning you're going to start being uh, susceptible to thinking in like terms like, well, I'm taking this drug. What other drugs are there out there now that I could take to get me high or to make me forget my pain or to make me feel better? So just be very careful. You need the spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahuwah to guide you into all truth. Little did I know, the Bible warns us, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. I think the scripture is something like, evil company corrupts good character. Um, but I'm not going to, you know, say, just research that yourself if you want to find out um, anytime I read a scripture here. Because again, this is from the NLT which I don't recommend, the New Living Translation. 
At age 16, I shaved my head into a mohawk haircut. I thought I was so cool, but the Bible also warns us. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. The truth is, I was mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually lost, and headed straight down the middle of the road to self-destruction. In fact, my favorite song at the time was Highway to Hell by ACDC. It wasn't until, of course, I don't recommend rock and roll or anything like that, very satanic. I wasn't until much late, it wasn't until much later in life, I discovered the highly informative documentaries, War of the World Views and Hell's Bells 1 and 2. Those I do recommend when you watch those, it will scare you out of anything that you think you should be listening to. Uh, you know, rightfully give you some fear of Yahweh. Body centered. At six feet two inches tall, I weighed a sickly 135 pounds. After being deathly ill in bed for about two weeks, I read the book Arnold's Bodybuilding for Men by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, today, I'd be very cautious about bodybuilding. It's a very egocentric uh, thing to be doing. At the same time, physical fitness and is, is not bad. So just be careful as you get into something like uh, improving your body. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons to glorify Yah, glorify Yahuwah, and not to glorify yourself. Um, at the same time, remember, Yahuwah, he uses all things for good for those who love Yah and are the called according to his purpose. So anything you've been through up until now, he will use that to glorify himself if you turn to him and, and ask him to come into your life and to change you and that you, if you repent, uh, that is to agree with Yah's word and turn from your sins, he will cleanse you of all sin. Um, since, so, in 1987... I decided to try a new drug, bodybuilding steroids, which I don't recommend today. I started reading everything I could about scientific bodybuilding. Soon I was working out almost every day and quickly gained about 60 pounds in only one year. Since I weighed a solid 195 pounds, I entered two bodybuilding competitions in Michigan and won fifth place in both contests. And see, I don't tell you in there that there were only five contestants in each competition. So really, it was last place in both. Respect-centered. I thought I discovered the answer to all my problems. As I became stronger, women became more attracted to me. Plus, it seemed like everyone started liking me and wanted to be my friend. I don't remember the names of those two individuals there, but um, basically, I, got, I went ahead head first into the world. And, uh, you know, I always just thought, hey, everything's fine. This is good. This is what life's all about. Um, little did I know, big deception. Look, I had the, the devil's horns going right there. Devil's horns. And I didn't even, I wasn't a Satanist, but little did I know, you could say, yeah, I was a Satanist without knowing it. It's a scary thing about sat sat Satanism. Um, you can be a Satanist and not know it. That is, if you're in love with the world and the things of the world, and the things of the world, the, fa the, lo the, f the, fa the love of the Father is not in you. Therefore, by default, you are a Satanist, a follower of Hashatan, the deceiver. You're either a follower of Yahusha or Hashatan, a follower of Jesus. Again, though, I'd be careful with that name even. Uh, when you study it out, it can mean earth pig. And don't want to get into that teaching now. There's plenty of teachings on this, on that. Um, but um, you can be a follower of Jesus and not realize that you're a follower of Hashatan. In the past, Yahuwah winked at our misunderstanding. But in these end times, he is calling his 
remnant. He's calling those that truly love him to come out of the world and all deceptions. We are without excuse today. We have the internet. We have all these uh, gifted teachers of Yah's word that are going to lead you into all truth. And you have the Ruach HaKadosh that will use all things for good for those who love Yahuwah and are the called according to his purpose. And he will call you out of all deceptions. And the more truth you get, you become accountable to that truth. And that is a an admonition and a warning to those who think that they can do whatever they want and have been deceived by Satan to think that the law has been done away with and that the Torah is not for today. When you study it out, you'll start to find parts of the Torah have been fulfilled. Other parts have are going to be eternal. And they're there for you to understand what's good for you. They're loving instruction that's going to teach you what is unclean and clean, what is healthy for you and what's not. So prayerfully look into all these things. Uh, I encourage you to do that. Because otherwise you will be in a deception and not know it. And that's part of Satan's strategy, Hashitan, the father of lies. Okay, it was a dream come true. I was finally popular. But for some strange reason, I felt even emptier inside. Soon I found myself not only addicted to steroids, but also to cigarettes, alcohol, and many other drugs again. Honor student. In 1988, I graduated from Henry Ford II High School in Sterling Heights, Michigan. My favorite subjects were Honors English, Honors Physics, and Precalculus. My high school counselor said I would make a great mechanical engineer. Secondary school record, student copy, legal name. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> okay. I just put these in there so then you know I'm not making stuff up. Um, there's so much deception in this world. Uh but let's not get into that. This video would go forever. I just put these things in there so if you're curious, you can see. And get to know me a little better. And know that I'm not a deception and making things up. Success-centered. Around age 20, I wanted success. So I started studying self-help books like crazy. By age 24, I had read more than 500 books by authors such as Tony Robbins, Stephen Covey, Deepak Chopra, John Gray, Barbara DeAngelis, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, and J. Abraham. I wanted to share the so-called wisdom I had discovered. So in 1994, I wrote and self-published my own self-help book called How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth, Personal Perfection of Your Mind. My pen name was Dominic Ficini because I chose to use part of my middle name at the time. Now, today I don't recommend that book. Um, I think you can buy it on Amazon, but the thing is, is um, I recommend the Etz Affair. But now, I may read that book for us online just to have it. So if you're curious, and, you, and we'll see how Yah could use it to teach us today about what's not true and what is true. But we'll see, because really, I recommend getting into that at Sefer as a baseline study, um, going through all books, book 1 through 87 first, and then getting, there's a daily reading plan on David Yah, uh, day 1 of 365, starting with that, no matter what day it is, and just going through as a very first and foremost baseline of what to be focusing on each day. And then if you want to study other things, that's fine, of course, but uh, let Yahuwah lead you. Because time is limited, as you know. And so prioritization is, is key. Um, Ford II graduate writes book on continuous improvement of self. I'm not going to read all this. Uh, but you could probably go to the link and or pause it and watch, read some of it. Now, the other part is on the next page. Ford II graduate writes book on 
Continuous Improvement of Self. And that was from The Source. I don't even know if that's online these days, but just shows you back here. I guess we could read the subtitle here. Or the caption. Margaret Haynes, adult services librarian, recently accepted the donation of Ford II graduate Dominic Ficini's new book. I'm not going to read all that. It's not important. Our reader, or rather, one reader named Christos Kulos wrote me an amazing letter sharing how my book helped save his life through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, even though I wrote the book when I thought for certain God did not exist. You see how Yahuwah uses all things for good for those who love Yah and are the called according to his purpose? Now I'm going to see, maybe we could read this. It's dated 3-15-2001 from Harrison Township, Michigan. I think we'll read this because I believe this would be important. Dear Pete, a.k.a. David, I would like to say that about seven years ago, I found myself under great mental stress from being terminated at work. And I found your book at the Macomb County Library entitled How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth, Personal Perfection of Your Mind, which turned out to be the glue to hold me to this life. I'd been in, injured at the postal job, rather at the postal job, slip and fall. You see, I was delivering mail for a friend, January 25th, 1985, for a fellow postal mail lady friend who was severely mauled by a pit bull dog, pit bull dog and given shepherd, rather, I'm not sure how to read, yeah, pardon me, and given shepherd running wild in the area when I came to this one house and I went up a series of 15 steps and was reaching for the box with mail in my right hand when the ice on the floor, rather the ice on the step, become, rather became slippery. And the mailbag upright pulled I don't know what it says there. And the mailbag upright pulled me back down. My right foot started sliding and from started sliding out from under me and before I knew it I was at the bottom of the steps on the walkway spread eagle with my mail spread all of it in the snow all about. Wow. After I came back to, I was in shock. Got gathered up what mail I could and went home. In the morning, I had to go to the hospital because I couldn't get up out of my bedroom, uh, rather out of my, uh, up out of bed on my own. I broke my leg, neck, and back, and couldn't walk for years. My faith was severely tested. Pain medication, do's wow, I don't know what that says there, doctors, wow. Depression set in, and therapists and doctors worked me out for years, and I still remained in a stupor about it all. Wow. But every rose has a thorn, and found through prayer your book. Wow. 
and read all the simple truths in it. And again, this book he's talking about is not the book I'm reading to you. It's this other book. It began to... I'm just amazed at how Yahuwah uses all things for good. Even when I was an atheist, I wrote this book, and he uses it. All the simple truths it holds, and it rekindled life back within me. I began to read it to my family. Wife Gina and three children. All seem me come alive again. All seen me come alive again. Through this reminder of how important our family is, we all gelled together, reading aloud your miraculous, simple truths book in an easy to read format. I realized that by reading and feel ring in, I don't know what that word is, that by reading and fellering in what you wrote made sense to me. And over time, my mental exercises began bringing me out of my demonic depression. My family feels the mental wealth now, and I believe it to be a miracle cure. Whew. Um, that's amazing. It's also, it's amazing how sometimes we don't know. Sometimes what we think is a miracle cure is from Satan. Uh, that's something you got to pray about. I felt I lost my identity and wanted to die, not only from all the injuries and pain, but from loss of joy and all my not immediate, but formally abandon or oh all my not immediate but family abandoning me since this incident the holy spirit kept talking to me every time i'd read your book stuff like greater is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world the holy spirit helped me and you were with me, even though I never met you. But you made me feel I can. It changed my life and all my relationships have been changed for the better. I'm just, I'm crying because I can't believe that Yah would use me way back then, but that, that's how amazing his love is for us. He'll use us as sinners for his glory, and then he'll take us out from that. So we have a testimony, and it's not us, it's him doing the work. It's all him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Habaya. I love you, Habba. I hope you finish publishing another book on emotion and do CDs and TV show. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but TV shows too. Now, you know, Yaz Dev and me do the, uh, David Yah on YouTube. I believe this is the purpose of my life now. You know, the training in my entire life was to do what I'm doing now. Uh, but just, just amazing. The bottom line is that I'd like to talk, or I'd like to thank you 
from my heart for this mental exercise book to correct my take it for granted and depression in balance and through applying your simple truths in your book, life is now worth living again. Yeah, saved his life through that. <laughs> oh, only, only a wonderful creator like we have could save someone. When the author was an atheist, I was an atheist back then when I wrote that book. Now, if you don't see how Yah uses all things for good, pray about it. Let him show you. Thank you, Pete. I remain your loyal disciple in the Lord. <laughs> I was an atheist, you see. He's not my disciple. He's Yahuwah's disciple. Duh. Oh. Yahusha's disciple. But that's how Yah uses all things for good. He's the one that we follow, not me, not another man. Keep letting your light shine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Simply Christos Kurlos. P.S. You're truly Mr. Wealthy. Wow. I don't have much more to say about that. I think I poured my heart out during that. Whew. Esteem to Yahuwah. In reality, of course, God knew all along I would eventually come to love him. Little did I know, the Bible amazingly declares, God chose us in Jesus, Yahusha, before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4. For we are God's, Yah's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, Yahusha HaMashiach, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now there's a note from my aunt. Let's see here. Clear that out. I'll reply later. Let's continue here. That we should walk in them. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Since then, I've learned that some of what I wrote in that book is simply not true. Uh, I would say probably most, but, you know, we'll see. For example, humans evolving over millions of years, having unlimited power to set and accomplish any goal, etc. Now, I would even caution that word human. When you study that out, Hu is an Egyptian god with a ram's head. And human would be a worshiper of Hu. So I don't even use the word human anymore. I would just use mankind or people. Major deceptions going on in these end times. Just incredible. But that's what Yahusha said. Yah says in his word that uh, he will send John or Yahukanan told us that he, that Yahusha or Yahuwah will send a strong delusion to those who aren't lovers of the truth. Um, actually, that was Paul, Shaul. Paul said that. The truth is, Jesus warns us. Actually, I'm not even sure who said it now. Just You'd have to look that up. Um, forgive me. Sometimes I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have perfect memory and I don't remember things. And uh, Quote, he who is not with me is against me and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad, Matthew 12, 30. In the future, if God wills, I prayerfully plan to rewrite the book and call it Helpology. And that's what I did. But I really kind of didn't. You'd have to... I, I mean, I re, didn't rewrite the book. I wrote another book. And I didn't end up calling it Helpology. I called it Dave Christian's Helpology. Specific, you know, if you want to be technical and accurately 
So even there, that statement's not correct. But this time, I'm not rushing it. I'm waiting on the Lord's perfect timing. And be careful with that word, Lord. It can mean Baal, which is satanic. So I don't like to use the word Lord. Instead of my imperfect timing. Back then, my top role models in life were Tony Robbins and Oprah Winfrey. Wow, scary. Moreover, my main goal in life was to become the most helpful person of all time. And as we know, that is Yahusha. So, you can't become the most helpful person of all time. That's already been done by the Creator, Yahusha. Later, I discovered, like King Solomon in the Bible, or Shalomah, I mainly wanted wisdom to help lead others to the truth. And the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, Give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. The speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice, behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Also, rather, and I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So, if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream. 1 Kings 3, 5 through 15. But I was insecure and prideful because I also wanted respect, fame, and glory. Today, my top role model in life is God himself, and that is Yahusha, Elohim himself, Yahusha, Hamashiach, Yahusha is Yahuwah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, well, not the Lord Jesus Christ, the Yahusha, Hamashiach. Now, my main goal in life is to glorify God by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with as many people as possible. That is kind of still true. My main goal in life today is to be used by Yahuwah to do his will, whatever it is for me. And that is to give all esteem to Elohim, to Yah, by sharing the good news, the Besara, of Yahusha HaMashiach, which is with as many people as possible. These scriptures, the Bible, the scriptures declare this simple truth about knowledge and wisdom. The fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahweh, is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, 7. Self-centered. For a short time, I quit smoking, drinking, and doing drugs. But now, my main problem was I actually believed I was better than everyone else. I really thought I knew it all. Believing I was the God of my own universe, I became extremely self-centered. And I was proud to call myself an atheist, someone who is certain God does not exist. Later, I learned what the Bible says about atheists. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, or there is no Elohim, which means Almighty One. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. Psalm 14.1 
pleasure-centered. At age 25, I still felt empty inside, so I turned back to cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs to fill my void. But this time it would get much worse. As a, show, as a social experiment, I became a bartender, male stripper, the Italian stallion, and massage therapist. Although I still believed there was no God, I didn't realize I was worshiping the God of pleasure. By the way, what God do you worship in your life right now? By age 27, I had been divorced three times with three children, bankrupt, addicted to crack cocaine for two years, and my health was failing. I knew if I didn't change, I would never know my children and soon die a horrible death. At that time, I was a drug addict and, a, and starving dishwasher in South Beach, Florida. To survive, I was eating food scraps like a dog off the dirty dishes I was washing. So, as a last resort to save my life, I joined the United States Marine Corps for food, discipline, and money for college. By the way, today I have been married and divorced six times, and I have eight children. And it's only by Yahuwah's favor that I am still alive today. And uh, he did use all my life experience to prepare me for being an end times uh, teacher, and I, I give all esteem to Yahweh. Career-centered. During Marine Corps boot camp, I quit using cigarettes, alcohol, and crack cocaine by replacing them with physical training and good old Marine Corps discipline. But after graduation, I felt lonely again. So, I soon started smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, and sleeping with many different women again. I thought I was just partying and having fun, but I was really destroying my soul. Unknowingly, I was polluting... Look, another typo there. I was polluting spirit. Unknowingly, I was polluting my spirit, mind, and body in evil ways. This reminds me of what the Bible says. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians 6, 7. Another chance. On New Year's Eve of 1998 in Pensacola, Florida, while throwing up from drinking hard liquor, I cried, Jesus, please help me. I keep making the same mistakes. When I woke up the next morning, I felt peaceful inside with no desire to smoke or drink. I remember thinking it seemed like God had given me another chance. Although I wasn't a born-again Christian yet, or that is a born-from-above Mashiachim, follower of Messiah, yet, rather, yet, for the first time in my life, I started to think, God might actually exist. I also started to realize I could not save myself. Christian wife. As a Marine, I began going to church at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. And I would caution you on the word church. It comes from the root word circe, which has the root word circle, which when you go into a circle, or a church. Circe was a Greek goddess that would change men into animals or pigs through spells. But I did not ask Jesus into my heart yet, so I was still very self-centered. One night, I went to shoot pool at the game hall on base and met my soon-to-be fourth wife, Sabrina. She was a 20-year-old Chinese-American wearing blue jean coveralls. I flashed my biggest smile at her, lovingly gazed into her eyes, and 
introduced myself. Hi, I'm Dave. What's your name? She said, I'm Sabrina. As we talked, she said she was also a Marine going to school there. Later that night, she shared with me that she had been a born-again Christian since age 13. And she was still a virgin, saving herself for her soulmate. I knew a good thing when I saw it, so I immediately began to shower her with attention and romance. We fell in love and married only one month later. I say that because falling in love through the world's eyes, it's a very satanic thing oftentimes. It's a deception to think you're in love when it's really lust. By the way, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18, 22. Uh, wife-centered. Next, I became wife-centered. I called myself a Christian, but since I was in love, I didn't think there was anything missing in my life. But then my wife and I had to go to different military schools, so we did not see each other for about two months. Instead of turning to Jesus, or Yahusha, I turned back to alcohol to numb my loneliness. Regrettably, I was unfaithful to Sabrina with three different women in two weeks. When she came to visit me, I couldn't stand to hurt her feelings. So I lied to her at first. I probably also didn't want to get caught <laughs> and be left by her, but I felt so guilty and I didn't want to keep harming her. So I eventually confessed to Sabrina that I had been unfaithful. I cried and told her I wanted a divorce because I didn't deserve her. She was shocked and broke into tears. But to my surprise, she refused to divorce me. Sabrina said God made marriage to last forever, and she loved me no matter what. She hugged me tight, and we both cried in each other's arms for about 10 minutes. I couldn't understand it, but for the first time in my life, I felt unconditional love. Later, I learned this amazing love came from God's Holy Spirit living inside Sabrina's precious heart. Hurting my wife and destroying her innocence and trust was the worst pain I had ever felt. It was her pain that made me want to become a better husband. Legal trouble. I tried to quit drinking, but I couldn't. Then I was rightfully punished by the Marine Corps for drinking three beers during lunch. Three beers during lunch. I was put on restriction and lost my freedom for 45 days, but it was a blessing from God, or from Yah, because it forced me to stop drinking. At first, I rebelled against the Marine Corps, and I wanted out of the military. When I told my wife about my ongoing alcohol problems, she cried. Sabrina thought I quit drinking, but I had been lying to her the whole time. To my amazement, she soon forgave me again. Last chance. My wife's pain motivated me to start seeking God because I knew I could not be a good husband for her on my own. So I started to scientifically study the Holy Bible. For the first time in my life, I read the Bible with an open mind. Throughout my education, I had been brainwashed to believe the Bible was just a myth. But this time I scientifically tested the Bible by reading it as if God actually wrote it himself or Yah wrote it himself. I read the Bible believing God existed. He created me and he loved me. I patiently waited to see if my research would make a difference in my life. To my amazement, God began to speak to my heart through the Holy Bible. For the first time, I slowly began to understand God's loving plan he perfectly designed to save us from sin and death through the holy sacrifice of his son, his son Jesus Christ, Yahusha, HaMashiach. 
Moreover, I started to learn how one God eternally exists as three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, teaching on the Trinity here, I don't necessarily believe in the Roman Catholic teaching of the Trinity per se. I believe that Yah is Elohim, is Yahuwah, the Father, is Yahusha, the Son, is the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, that Elohim is one and that it's a great mystery, that they are all one, they're the same. And so I got that through prayer and revelation over the years. Um, if you don't believe that, I'll still fellowship with you. This is These are truths that took many years for Yah to show to me, and I may be incorrect, but uh, once I came to that belief, it's hard to kind of go back to the other beliefs because this the Ruach HaKadosh keeps confirming that it's true when you read the scriptures. Um, so that's where I'm at, but I still wasn't saved yet or delivered because I continued to trust in myself to change my life. Born again or born from above by God's grace. Six months later at age 29, sometime around December, 1998, I was finally saved in church one day at New Venture Christian Fellowship in Oceanside, California. As Pastor Sean Mitchell had us bow our, bow our heads, he asked if anyone wanted to receive Jesus Christ into their hearts. As he led us in a prayer, I submitted, my, I submitted myself to the creator of the universe, my God, my Lord, and my Savior, Jesus Christ, or my Yah, my Master, my Adon, and my Savior, my Deliverer, Yahusha HaMashiach. Forgiven. When I prayed, tears flooded my eyes as I thought about all the times I came so close to dying. But God, Yah, had always protected me. As I surrendered my entire will and pride to Yah, I felt the warmth of the Ruach HaKadosh enter my, my heart. I experienced God's pure love, Yah's pure love, and his total forgiveness of my evil past. Yahusha saves. I knew I was saved because I finally put all my faith and trust in Yahusha HaMashiach alone. It was the most important decision of my entire life. About six months later, I was baptized June 27th, 1999 in the Pacific Ocean by Pastor Ralph Wood of Calvary Chapel, Oceanside. Certificate of Baptism. By the way, since then I was re-baptized in the name of Yahusha. Yahusha had me, Yahuwah had me baptize or immerse myself in my bathtub uh, two months after I became aware of his name of Yahusha. Uh, Christian Fellowship. By Yah's grace, I have been in biblical fellowship with other Christians ever since. I highly recommend Calvary Chapels, not anymore, because they teach through the entire Word of God verse by verse, or any other church that teaches the Bible as the Word of God. I don't recommend any churches anymore. And encourages you to live a Bible-based and Christ-centered life. Now, today I encourage you to live, you to live a Scripture-based and Hamashiach or Yahusha-centered life, or Yah-centered life. Christ-centered, Hamashiach-centered. In 2000, Yah led me to legally change my name to David Christian. I go by Dave because it's more personal. 
as a witness to the amazing, amazing change Jesus Christ has made and is still making in my life. Today I go by David. Yeah. Um, I don't want to have it Dave anymore. I like David. Uh, Peter Lewis Dominic Facini. There's the uh, marriage or the divorce certificate. No, legal birth name. There's the legal name cha name change. To David Christian. And that's still my legal name, as I mentioned. It's still my legal name today. But I, I prefer David Yah. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Proverbs 22.1 we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, of Elohim, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Ruach of the Adon, or the Master, Yahusha. Mashiach. Why David Christian? I prayerfully chose the name David for three main reasons. One, in the Bible, King David was unfaithful to God by committing adultery against his wife, like I unfortunately did more than once. But God still forgave him, and that fact gives me great hope. Two, David means beloved, and I love to be loved. Three, the Bible says King David was a man after God's own heart. And I love Yah more than anything. A few years later, one day when I was praying and reading my Bible, the Lord suddenly revealed to me that David is in the Old Testament, or the original covenant, and Christian is in the New Testament, or renewed covenant. I thought that was pretty neat because the Bible says, talking about both the Old and New Testaments or original or first covenant and renewed covenants. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of Yah. Therefore, my new name is symbolic of the importance of reading and living the entire word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Wow, and that's really true today with David Yah, to actually live the Torah. Thanks to God's grace and mercy, I am now Christ-centered. Today I'm Mashiach-centered, or Yah-centered, and enjoy a spiritually healthy and wealthy life. As a born-again Christian, or born from above Mashiachim, I am grateful, honored, and baruched or blessed, to say, I love my Adon, Yahusha, HaMashiach. Honorable service. Here's a newspaper article I wrote as a marine journalist after I became a Christian. Take responsibility. Sergeant David Christian, scout staff. I'm not going to read all that. I'll pause it. I mean, you can pause it and read it. It's not as important as these other things. Also, during my military service, the Lord led me to create a Christian ministry website in 2000. Here's an article, North County Times, Faith and Values. Notice how there's this logo that was with me and Sabrina when we were in the Marine Corps. Um, I think the ministry was called 1866jesus.org. It was a toll-free number and website. We gave out a uh, copy of the New Testament. Man does about face to follow Jesus. Marine reaches out to others via website. In 2002... I applied my theory of helpology to business and created a clean comedy contest TV show and movie called LaughShow.com. It never became a movie. 
However, I chose to cancel the production after I was deployed to war as a Marine combat correspondent in Kuwait and Iraq from February to August 2003 during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Camp Pendleton, San Diego Union Tribune, North Coast, Saturday, December 21st, 2002. Town Focus, Camp Pendleton. Sergeant aims for laughter with comedy pilot. Those are some fun times back then. I was so in the world and I just didn't know it. On January 8th, 2004, the U.S. Marine Corps awarded me an early separation and honorable discharge so I could further my education at Biola University. Biola is short for Bible Institute of Los Angeles. Certificate of Release or Discharge from Active Duty. And uh, there it shows that it was honorable. A lot of people always ask that. Were you honorably discharged? There's proof of that. Biola Blessing. On December 14th, 2008, after attending seven different colleges and universities, on and off for 19 years, the Lord blessed me with a Bachelor of Science in Organizational Leadership degree from Biola University, and I had the equivalent to an, a, a bachelor's degree, or I had a, a bachelor's of science in organizational leadership with the equivalent of a secondary degree in Bible study. But since I did it online, they didn't give me like an official secondary degree, but they said I had the equivalent of it. I just... I needed to send in some paperwork if I wanted to get it in writing, but I didn't. I didn't care to. Um, so this was just like the foundation of my studies, Biola University. Today, I don't even recommend going to a university. I recommend just studying the Etz Affair. You'll get more wisdom from that than, and less deception than anything else. Uh, sinful concept, but you know, Yah's going to use all things for good. If you've been trained in the world, just like Moses was, you can come out of the world and have all that worldly wisdom and know for certain that it's not true. And some of it's true, but then you'll know that a lot of it is uh, designed to deceive. Sinful consequences. Sadly, because I took my eyes off the Lord and chose to be unfaithful to Sabrina, she biblically divorced me in 2006, and we are no longer married. Um, I would say that the reason I didn't I was so often taking my eyes off the Lord because I was taught that Torah or Yah's loving instruction was done away with. I didn't know what sin was. I thought that I didn't need to live the Torah. Um, but now that I do live by Torah, it's so much easier not to sin. <laughs> Yahusha shows you through the word what sin is. He walked in Torah, and the scriptures say that we should follow and walk as he did. That's not to say we're going to be completing everything in the Torah. A lot of it has been fulfilled by Yahusha. Uh, but there's so many important things in the Torah. When you study it, you're going to see, wow, I was deceived to think that I could uh, live a righteous life. Um, sin less and not follow Torah. It just, what a deception. But Yah is waking up his people in these end times, and he allowed us to go through that so we would know the truth for certain. Today, by God's amazing grace, I am forgiven, free in Mashiach, and desire to keep in touch and provide for all my children from my former marriages. And that is true. I don't, don't get to do that, but I desire it. Set free... Furthermore, Yah also delivered me from a more than 20-year addiction through a free, Christ-centered and Bible-based 60-day online course at Setting Captives Free. It's not a bad course. I would recommend it, um, but I would also recommend... Uh, I don't know if I would recommend it. I would say first just go through the Etz Affair and pray. and let it, Yah is strong enough to deliver you from all things. Yahuwah! Yahusha is going to do it through his Ruach HaKadosh. Get that indwelling and filling of the Ruach and trust in Yah to do it. He's all-powerful. He can do all things. 
You don't need to trust in a man's system designed to do this or that. I'm not saying they're bad, but I am saying that the minute you start saying, I don't trust that Yah is strong enough through the scriptures, then you're immediately missing the point. You should be in that scripture first. You should be in prayer, asking Yah to teach you. He loves you. He'll do it. He's all powerful. He, he can do it. And then there's less of a chance to you to get sidetracked by some man-made religion. Glory to Yah. You may be wondering why I'm willing to share my personal life story with you. It's because the scriptures says, or the scriptures say, they overcame Ashitan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Revelation 12, 11. Moreover, Yahusha said, you shall receive power when the Ruach HaKadosh has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me to the end of the earth. Look at that. Now this is going through the internet to the end of the earth. What a literal, literal meaning of scripture. Amazing. Acts 1, 8. Sinner turned saint. Oh, and by the way, if you speak different languages, prayerfully see if Yah wants you to convert the Etzefer into your language. You can add subtitles to it uh, through David Yah YouTube. You know, all the different languages. So it would be a big, pro a big project. Uh, maybe w fellow worshipers, uh, followers of Yahusha, Hamashiach in your country or in your tongue could do it. But I'm praying that Yah, we, ah, well, Yah, we ask that you would deliver every different language on your earth plane to come to the David Yah YouTube channel and listen to the Et Sefer and translate it into all the different languages for your glory for free so that people could listen to it through YouTube for your glory. In Yahusha's almighty name, hallelujah, amen. Sinner turned saint. Of course, this side of heaven, no Christian will ever be sinless. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1 8. But by Yah's grace, today I sin less. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 9. You see, now that Yahusha lives in me, the Ruach HaKadosh reveals the truth about sin to me. Therefore, I no longer enjoy the deception of sin like I used to. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, or Yah, is eternal life in Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adon, or Master. Romans 6.23 but what's so amazing to me, once we have faith in Yahusha, even though we still sin as Christians, God, Yah, declares us righteous in his sight because of Yahusha's sacrifice. Yah actually gives us his righteousness and declares all Christians are saints. I don't believe that statement anymore. I would say he declares all mashi, uh, it's uh, mashikims or followers of the Messiah are called out ones or dedicated ones. Wow. That's, that's an interesting uh, study when you look at that because you could read that and think, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm saved. But you might be deceived and not be a follower of Yahuwah, Yahusha. Um, you may be, and he may be you know, calling you into a deeper truth and understanding of his word. Um, but that's going to be only he's going to know. And uh, only um, you're going to want to find out, though, through your prayer and study. I can't judge you eternally. That's for him to do. At the same time, I would say if you truly love your creator, you're going to want to come out of all lies, all deceptions. And that would include, once you know his real name, you'd want to use that, I would, I would say. But that would be up to you to decide if you want to do that. 
Yah actually gives us, yeah, okay, now, the righteousness of Yah apart from the law is revealed. For righteous, rather, the righteousness of Yah through faith or belief in Yahusha HaMashiach to all and on all who believe, Romans 3, 21 through 20, 22, to the church or called out ones of Yah, to those who are sanctified in Yahusha HaMashiach, called to be dedicated ones, with all who in every place call on the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, our master or Adon, 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Today, I am saved or delivered by grace alone, that is, favor alone, or pitching tents alone with Yahuwah, through faith or belief alone, in HaMashiach alone. And it is only by Yah's amazing grace or favor or pitching tents with me that I'm even alive today. Now, I have the gift of faith or belief in my Adon, Master, Yahusha HaMashiach, that he will continue to help make me more and more like him. I am sure that the one who began a good work in you will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Yahusha HaMashiach returns. Philippians 1.6 Answered prayers over the past decade. The Holy Spirit has been teaching me, or the Ruach HaKadosh has been teaching me all things. John, Yahukanan 14.26 Through prayer, scripture study, fasting, Calvary chapels or fellowshipping, and K-Wave Radio, pastors Chuck Smith, Greg Laurie, and many others, and I don't recommend them anymore. It was okay to start there, but not to end there. Train to teach. Moreover, by Yah's grace, I was recently employed as a first, second, and third grade, ele third grade elementary teacher holding a Tennessee transitional teaching license, highly qualified K-6 through six, kindergarten, K through sixth grade, at Nashville Global Academy for one year. And there is the official state of Tennessee license. And then, I'm no longer an, an elementary teacher now. I do David Ya YouTube full time. Here was a letter from the Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools, August 10, 2009. It's short. We can read it to whom it may concern. Please accept this letter as verification that Mr. Dave Christian is employed as a teacher at Nashville Global Academy. Thank you kindly. Sincerely, Edwina Harris Hamby, Ph.D., founding president slash CEO and executive principal. And that was of uh, Nashville Global Academy. That was a fun time in my life to teach children. At the same time, I don't miss it because there was authority above me that um, I had to teach lies. The globe earth. So many different things in our culture. And they would keep constantly changing the curriculum, saying, oh, now this is true in science. This isn't. Um, I love teaching Yah's word or studying and just really just love reading Yah's word mostly. Because then... At least we know that's correct. That's true. And even parts of that is going to be, you know, you have to have the spirit, the Ruach, teach you all truth. Because man has manipulated and tried to, Satan has tried to manipulate, you know, scriptures throughout the years. He's been very successful at it too. That's why there, I don't see any version that's perfect. I used to believe the King James Version was perfect, but now I believe it's a masterful designed by Satan to deceive the masses. A lot of it's true, but then when you've got the the false names in there, 
it's a huge deception because then you start getting into thinking that the Savior's name is Jesus Christ and you teach that as truth and you're teaching a lie. And you'll be accountable for that once you know it. Um, Nashville Global Academy, January 19th, 2010. I think I'll read this because it shares my heart uh, since a lot of this is to get to know me. Dear parents, guardians, my name is Dave Christian. I am now your child's first grade teacher and want to introduce myself. I am an Italian American who was born in Detroit and raised in Sterling Heights, Michigan. I earned a Bachelor of Science in Organizational Leadership with a minor in Biblical Studies from Biola University and I'm currently working toward a dual teaching license in elementary education K through six and Biblical Studies seven through 12 at Free Will Baptist Bible College here in Nashville. That was true, I never completed it. Thank ya. Um, I am a loving husband, father of six children, former award-winning U.S. Marine Sergeant, Iraq War veteran, public relations specialist, photojournalist, TV news reporter, military ceremony public speaker, and author of How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth. Today, I serve as a first grade teacher, highly qualified K-6, through and chair of the Disciplines Committee here at Nashville Global Academy, Sunday School Bible teacher ages 11 through 12 at the River Church and founder of DaveChristian.org and Helpology.org. Both those sites I don't have anymore. I enjoy a humble life with my wife, children, students, and church family here in Nashville. I don't really think it was a humble life. I think it was a very prideful life. I just didn't know it. Um, and the reason I don't have any websites is because Yah's just having me focus on the David Yah YouTube channel. And if that ever goes down, then I trust in Yah to teach everyone. I, I'm not needed. I'm just a tool. Yah's using me. I'm dirt. Yah lives through me. I don't trust in me or my work to be something that has to be there. I trust that Yah is all powerful. He's going to, whatever he does, is what I want, his will, not mine. My classroom motto is help, learn, love. Plus, I have a reputation for highly effective, kind, and firm classroom management with a passion for helping students become enthusiastic, self-directed, lifelong learners by asking the problem-solving question, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works? So see, I was applying my theory of helpology in the classroom classroom at the time, and it was kind of fun. Very effective. I found it to be true. I mean, uh, effective. In closing, I have given your child a new homework folder, so please check it every night, because we will be having homework two to three times per week. Thank you. I appreciate your help and look forward to working with each of you. Sincerely, Dave Christian, first grade teacher, highly qualified K-6, through chair, discipline committee, and that was an email I had is no longer. Um, I'll share with you an email I do have if you want to email me. Mr.david.ya at gmail.com. I don't have a cell that I give out. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. And that is true for today. But that would be mr.david.yah at gmail.com. Now, I do prefer that you ask questions in the comments section of David Yah on YouTube. Reason being is then it becomes a public place where others can help answer those questions. And then when I answer the question, it will be public. And then that way people don't have to keep emailing the same question. So again, but if there's something private that you don't want on the internet, then go ahead and use the mr.david.yah at gmail.com. Again, only if it needs to be private. Because I really prefer that we communicate publicly. So one, that there's nothing hidden. All truth can come out. And again, that, that this community can help each other answer things that are true. And we can all learn together publicly. And then the public can learn. And it can bring people into the fold that don't know ya. And they can see a healthy, open and honest communication. And they can learn truth from it. Here's my favorite note I received from one of my students. I love Mr. Christian.
But then, due to financial reasons, the school shut down after the first year. Therefore, please play, pray Yah will continue to faithfully open and close doors to only allow me to serve him exactly where he wants me to be. And I still ask that for that prayer too. Uh, and I think he's answered that prayer. <laughs> I can definitely say he's answered that prayer in my life. Thank you, Abba. When he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. When he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. Isaiah 22, 2. Rather, Isaiah 22, 22. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Ephesians 6, 18. Trust in Yah with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. His foundation. Recently, Yah clearly led me to my new church home at His Foundation Fellowship Church in Nashville. I'm not there anymore, of course. That was a long time ago. Uh, today, I fellowship basically through the internet exclusively. I haven't found a fellowship that I can physically go to that is, in my understanding, pure enough or scriptural. There, my brothers and sisters in Hamashiach welcomed me with the love of Jesus, or Yahusha. Yahusha said, All will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. John 13, 35. Also for now, Yah had made it very clear for me to remain planted here in Nashville. Of course, he had me move since then. One of the main reasons my Yahusha or Adon Yahusha Hamashiach has lovingly taught me through the stormy seasons and so-called failures in life is this same Yah who takes care of me will supply all my needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Yahusha Hamashiach. Philippians 4.19 Although I have been through some very challenging times, mostly due to my own sinful choices, I continued to pray and read my Bible while looking to Yahusha for his help. And the Adon blessed me by always, or Baruch me, by always providing for my needs. And think about that. If I was not alive today, Think about this. If you're alive today, all your needs have been met. Not all your wants. If all your needs weren't met, you would have died. So all your needs have been met. Not all of your wants, but all your needs. In fact, if you really think about it, if you are alive today, then Yah has provided for all your needs. If he hadn't provided for all your needs, then you would be dead right now. The problem is, oftentimes, we mistake our selfish wants for actual needs. Moreover, I've learned, we can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation or deliverance. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly Yahuwah loves us. Because he has given us the Ruach HaKodesh. To fill our hearts with his love. Romans 5.30, rather 5.3-5. Made for ministry. Today... I am blessed to serve my Adon Yahusha Mashiach as the founder and author of Helpology at Helpology.org. Of course, no longer true. Um, but again, David Yah YouTube. And as a full-time student, I don't go to school anymore. 
working toward my master's degree in business administration and management and strategy degree, uh, rather my master's in business and rather <laughs> working toward my master's in business administration in management and strategy degree at Western Governors University online. I did almost complete that degree. I only was two classes short, but then Yahoo told me to stop doing it. So I don't have a master's, don't need a master's, don't want a master's. Sterling Heights native establishes social science called Helpology. That was an article written by the Source Newspapers, sourcenewspapers.com, June 13, 2010. Henry Ford II grads musings based on religion available on web. Former Sterling Heights resident Dave Christian developed a Christian-based social science called Helpology. I'm not going to read all that. Um, Sterling Heights native establishes social science called Helpology. Published, now here's the web link, Tuesday, June 8th, 2010, by Deborah Kazubsky. I'm not going to read all that. You can read it if you want. I don't recommend Helpology. Again, in fact, if you want to do Helpology, I'm doing it right now with you. That's what we do here on David Yaw's YouTube, is we do scriptural Helpology with the founder of Helpology, who is Yahusha. He's living through me, and he's doing it. Here was uh, Western Governors University. Just proof that I was in that school. And let's see what else is here. Applied Helpology. Interestingly, while doing research for Helpology.org during March of 2011, I first discovered the following terms for knowledge management, KM, and personal knowledge management, PKM, on Wikipedia. Knowledge management, KM comprises a range of strategies and practices used in organizations, rather, or, used in an organization to identify, create, represent, distribute, and enable adoption of insights and experiences. Such insights and experiences comprise knowledge, either embodied in individuals or embedded in organizations as processes or practices. And so we're actually doing knowledge management on David Yaw YouTube when we leave uh, comments in the sections there and recommend other links and things like that. An established discipline since 1991, see Nanaka, 1991, KM includes courses taught in the fields of business administration, information systems management, and library and information sciences, Alavi and Leidner, 1999. More recently, other fields have started contributing to KM research. These include information and media, computer science, public health, and public policy. Personal knowledge management, PKM, refers to a collection of processes that an individual carries out to gather, classify, store, search, retrieve, and share knowledge in his slash her daily activities, Grunspenkis 2007, and how these processes support work activities, Wright 2005. It is a response to the idea that knowledge workers increasingly need to be responsible for their own growth and learning, Smedley 2009, and represents a bottom-up approach to knowledge management as opposed to more traditional top-down KM, Pollard 2008, Wikipedia. It was then I first realized personal knowledge management from a biblical or scriptural based Mashiach centered and scientific perspective is the closest field of study that currently exists to describe what I actually do as a helpologist. One who scripturally and scientifically researches, uses, and recommends the world's most helpful products and services. Therefore, Yah willing, after I complete my MBA in February 2013, which I'm not going to do, I don't plan to do, 
uh, I plan to pursue the, and I don't now, but five-year Doctor of Philosophy, PhD in Knowledge Management degree at Walden University and write my personal knowledge management dissertation on applied helpology to continue to help as many people as possible, save time, energy, and money for free. Well, I would say I'm already doing that through David Yaw YouTube, but now it's being done through Yaw's ways and not the world's ways. If you or anyone you know is looking for work, you have my permission to share my following cover letter, resume, and letters of recommendation as an example to help you improve your career-seeking efforts. This I still do recommend. Uh, it's pretty helpful, but you have to pray and find out. I think I still have links for these tools for free. I'll have to check. I don't know. I might have deleted them all too, but here's an, an example of a cover letter, sample cover letter, resume and recommendations. And by the way, these tools help me uh, get jo a job at Google. So, dear hiring manager, I was wondering if you would be open to interviewing me as a manager. Hi, my name is Dave Christian. Quote, I appreciate Dave Christian's helpology. He has done an excellent job putting together useful websites that can assist anyone looking for helpful insights and answers to life's problems and challenges. Dr. Brian Cluth, best-selling author, 40-day spiritual journey to a more generous, generous life and founder, generouslife.org. Dave Christian's positive attitude, positive aura, and strong worth ethics, strong Work ethics made him an instant role model, Mamie Ward, 1st Lieutenant, United States Marine Corps. Colonel Coulter praises you for your enthusiasm, professionalism, and helpful can-do attitude. He calls you the cream of the crop. For all your good work, please accept my praise. You're making a difference. A.B. Davis, Brigadier General, United States Marine Corps, and of course, all praise and esteem to Yahuwah. Dave's great work is overshadowed only by his virtue, rather only by his virtue as a human being. His award is equivalent to winning an Oscar. Dave is driven not by a desire for riches or fame, but by a calling to serve humanity or mankind. He genuinely, genuinely cares about people. He's a pleasure to work with and would be a pleasure to work for. Brian LeMay, managing editor, managing editor, the Scout newspaper. Dave Christian is one of the most outgoing and enthusiastic people I have ever had the pleasure of working with. Dave's infectious, positive attitude was extremely well suited to evangelizing a company in the marketplace. Dave applied himself conscientiously and constantly, strove to find new and innovative ways to align the customer's interest with the interest of the company. His effervescent personality is unmatched and would serve any company well. Dan Collins, Director of Sales, Total Training, Inc. In summary, my 17 years of proven leadership may help bring you outstanding success. Where do you think we should go from here? Sincerely, Dave Christian. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know at, and that phone number is no longer active. A uh, brief uh, resume here. Again, this is a good tool. Dave Christian, servant leader, BS, organizational leadership, MBA, student management and strategy online. See, it says MBA student management and strategy online. And of course, that's not accurate anymore. Experience, helpology.org, founder and author, 2000 to present. Founder of the Information Age Social Science, Helpology. Helps clients save time, energy, and money for free by answering the question. Researches, uses, and recommends the world's most helpful products and services. Continuous Improvement Books, author, 1994 to present. Wrote the book, How to Gain Love, Respect, Happiness, Health, and Wealth. Read more than 500 books on communication, business, and life skills. Created, designed, edited, and published entire text in four months at age 24. Nashville Global Academy, elementary teacher, 2009 to 2010. Promoted to school-wide discipline committee chairman. 
managed a 22 student classroom using effectiveteaching.com. Structured discipline with time to teach.com. Motivated students with whole brain teaching.com. Taught first, second, and third grade state education standards integrated with coreknowledge.org. And those are websites if you're a teacher that teach you different skills of teaching. Uh, you might want to check them out prayerfully if you're a teacher, but uh, I would uh, prefer to just let Abba Yah teach me all truth and teach through me, especially to my children. I would do homeschooling. But there may be times where Yah tells you to let your children be light in the public schools. I just don't know how often that would be because there's so much evil and brainwashing going on. But that's prayer between you and Abba Yah. Target Corporation, executive team leader, 2007 to 2008, promoted to store-wide safety captain, trained and managed a 175 employee team and $40 million per year store, role modeled safe and secure and fast, fun and friendly service, communicated effectively, managed relationships and taught best practices. Welk Resort, real estate agent, 2005 to 2006, produced $1,101,364 with highest sales volume of real estate per guest during first year. Promoted to help train and mentor a 55 employee team at a $30 million per year resort. Closed 21% of 243 sales presentations. Each tour lasted two to six hours. Total Training Inc. Inside Sales Representative 2004 to 2005 produced $12,453 with highest sales volume of Adobe software training videos in one weekend. Prospected more than 100 potential clients per day by phone and email. Earned Client compliments and repeat business each week. United States Marine Corps Public Relations Specialist, 1997 to 2004. Promoted to train, manage, and lead 51 U.S. Marines. Supervised 45 community relation events. Organized 19 base tours and guided 959 visitors. Wrote and produced 79 stories for newspaper and TV delivered nine speeches as the most requested public speaker on entire Marine Corps base. I was at Camp Pendleton, California. Education, MBA, Management and Strategy, Western Governors University Online, expected 2013, BS, Organizational Leadership, Biola University, GPA 3.7, 2007, Certificate Public Relations Specialist, U.S. Defense Information School, 1999. Awards, Target Corporation, Great Team Hero, Welk Resort Group, Highest Sales Volume Per Guest, Department of Defense, First Place Thomas Jefferson Award for Photojournalism, United States Marine Corps First Place Television Program, United States Marine Corps Letter of Appreciation for Narration, United States Marine Corps Letter of Appreciation for Community Relations. And just like Paul in the scriptures, all of that I count as dung now. All that training, I count as dung. It's just amazing how you think you know so many things. And it's just a skill that is designed oftentimes to deceive people into the satanic world. That was a picture there, award-winning Iraq veteran and former U.S. Marine Sergeant Dave Christian, the scout Boy, I don't know if I should read all of these. I mean, on the one hand, it'll, it, it, I'm going to let you read it if you want, because it does teach a lot about who I am. But again, I don't think who I am is that important anymore. Let's focus on Yah's word, the Etzefer. Um, But it's there if you want to read it. You can pause it and read it. Total training. I'm 
Okay. I mean, you know, this is just what this does it establishes my credibility in the world. And then that way you can if you're in the world now and you're not and you're wondering, you know, this, who is this person and um do I you know want to respect his life's work before I learn from him, which, you know, a lot of times we're trained to do that in the world. Then you have, there's proof for you if you want to uh, do this sort of research first. It's not necessarily bad research to do, um, but oftentimes I've found in life, find out what someone's doing today, not what they did in the past. What are they doing today that will tell you more about who they are, not what they've done in the past? Trustworthy teaching. Yah has given each believer at least one spiritual gift. Ruach, dedicated breath, Ruach HaKadosh. One dedicated gift or Ruach gift to build up the body of Yahusha, HaMashiach, and to minister or serve others or help others in our hurting world. If our gift is prophecy, we'll proclaim Yah's view of right and wrong. If it's service, we will desire to meet others' needs. The gift of teaching has these characteristics, organized. Whether in conversation or in a more formal setting, we will seek to communicate information clearly so the listener can follow. Yah has wired us to analyze material and present it logically. Thorough. We want others to understand not simply the conclusion, but the steps leading up to it. We also desire to help them think matters through. Accurate. Our priority is to know the truth. So, we ask questions in an attempt to validate the accuracy of what we learn. We will also inquire about the trustworthiness of our source of information. Studious, we derive great delight from studying and researching and are strongly motivated to share what we learn. Truth is presented not simply to share knowledge, but with the goal that Yah will transform the hearer's life. Scripture-oriented, with this gift comes a strong desire to know what Yahuwah has to say. While we may recognize the value of others' experiences, reading about them is not our main con uh, reading about them is not our main concern, nor are we especially motivated by personal illustrations. All of the spiritual gifts can be used in the workplace, in our communities, and in our homes. We make effective use of our spiritual gift when we are filled with the ruach hakadesh by relying on ourselves will get us off track. A Christian or Mashiachim gifted or follower of Messiah gifted in teaching reaps the fruit of self-control by faithfully absorbing and applying scripture, Galatians 5.23, whereas shifting to human or mankind reasoning leads to self-indulgence. Through one's desire to learn, the Ruach develops dependability and diligence. But unless the believer abides in Yahusha HaMashiach, he or she can become careless and in inconsistent. The fruit of peace and patience grows, or the fruit of Shalom, which is completeness, and patience grows as studies lead to deeper faith.
or belief, amana. But anxiety and impatience results if the focus shift or shifts to self. As you exercise your God-given gift or Yah-given gift, pray for the Ruach's leadership. That's how to have the greatest impact for the kingdom of Yahuwah. Therefore, allow the, the Ruach to direct your teaching ability for Yah's glory and others' gain. Stanley, 2007, page 1,328. Conclusion. Show me your friends, and I'll tell you who you are. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Proverbs 13.20 If the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Matthew 15.14 And if it seems evil to you to serve Yahuwah, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house... We will serve Yahuwah. Joshua 24, 15. I'd rather walk with Yahusha than run with Hashatan. To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the Helpology question or the H question. Abba Yahuwah. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Two, introducing helpology. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Proverbs 18, 15. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Proverbs 1 5. Einstein said, We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. The whole of science is nothing more than a refinement of everyday thinking. The best design is the simplest one that works. A friend is someone you know, like, and trust, someone who wants to help you. Helpology is the scriptural and scientific study of the world's most helpful products and services. But helpology is not for everyone. Helpology is only for those who are open to learning. So how can helpology help save you and the people you love time, energy, and money? First, a helpologist is one who scripturally and scientifically researches, uses, and recommends the world's most helpful products and services. Next, the word helpological means the most helpful and simplest way that works. In general, most people already tend to think logically, that is, with correct reasoning. But how often are you truly encouraged to think beyond your common sense. Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is the preview of life's coming attractions. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Therefore, helpology inspires you to no longer just think logically, but to start thinking helpologically, seeking the most helpful and simplest ways that work. Isn't it true that thinking is simply the process of asking and answering questions? Therefore, now you can come up with your own great ideas to help solve any problem by simply answering Helpology's basic thinking tool, co tool called the Helpology question or the H question or the question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works?
You may not realize it yet, but in many ways, you probably already think like a helpologist. Isn't it true you tend to use and recommend the best products and services you've discovered in your life so far? However, isn't it also true you may or may not know exactly which new products and services are scripturally and scientifically proven to be most helpful? Think about it. Out of all the products and services you've ever used in your entire life, which ones are still the most helpful and simplest ones that, ones that work? Is there room for improvement in any area of your life or in the lives of the people you love? How much time, energy, and money do you think you could save if a professional helpologist kept you up to date on the world's most helpful products and services? Imagine how your life could change if you knew exactly which products and services were scripturally and scientifically proven to be most helpful. If you had access to this valuable information, then wouldn't it be must much easier to help yourself and the people you love save time, energy, and money? Better still, you wouldn't have to spend your limited time, energy, and money doing all the research. Helpology may actually be a yas end to a healthier and more joyful life for you and the people you love. So, how is your spiritual health right now? Your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your financial health. How healthy are your personal and business relationships? Would you like to enjoy true health and wealth in every area of your life? Shalom, completeness. Who wouldn't? Then from now on, whenever you need to solve even the smallest problem in your life, keep answering the H question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Amazingly, Yah revealed the H question to me after many years of prayer Bible study, and scientific research. Today, I am now convinced it is the most helpful and simplest question that works to help solve any problem. For example, if you want to help as many people as possible, keep answering the H question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works to help as many people as possible? Or if you want to write a book, keep answering the H question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works to write a book? Test it yourself. I guarantee you will discover answering the H question is biblically or scripturally and scientifically proven to help save you time, energy, and money. Einstein said, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is to not... Rather, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Intellectuals solve problems. Geniuses prevent them. And Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, accurately advises, above all else, preparation is the key to success. So, the next time you have any problem you need to prevent, Keep answering the H question, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works to prevent this problem? Einstein also said, science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Before Yah, or before God, we are all equally wise and equally foolish. I want to know God's thoughts, Yah's thoughts. All the rest are just details. When the solution is simple, Yah is answering. Most importantly, the scriptures say, if any man or if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of Yahuwah, and it will be given to him. James 1.5 Therefore, prayerfully asking Yahuwah 
the H question is scripturally and scientifically proven to save you the most time, energy, and money. I guarantee you will be amazed at some of the helpological solutions Yah will supernaturally reveal, supernaturally reveal to you when you humble yourself and ask Him to help you. Do you see a wise man in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Proverbs 26, 12. So just imagine for a moment how your eternal future might improve if you asked Yahuwah to help you in every area of your life. Now picture that your eternal life future rather. Now picture what your eternal future might look like if you don't ask Yah to help you. The choice is yours. Einstein also said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. It's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. Most people say that it is the intellect which makes a great scientist. They are wrong. It is character. Whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted with important matters. Love is a better teacher than duty. It is the rather it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. Joy in looking and comprehending is nature's most beautiful gift. The pursuit of truth and beauty is a sphere of activity in which we are permitted to remain children all our, all our lives. Strive not to be a success, but rather of value or of helpfulness. A person starts to live when he can live outside himself. Only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. And that's a scary quote there, because if you fall into Satan, then that's true. I would say the most beautiful thing we can experience is of Yah. He is the source of all true art and science. True religion is real living, living with all one's soul, with all one's goodness and righteousness. Great spirits have often encountered violent opposition from weak minds. Never lose a holy curiosity or a set apart from the world curiosity or never lose a dedicated curiosity dedicated to Yahuwah. In closing, let's have fun together as we begin the exciting lifelong adventure of discovering how helpology can help save you and the people you love time, energy, and money for free. In conclusion, Einstein owlishly observed, and remember, an owl is an unclean bird. There are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. Again, the choice is yours. Behold, Yah is my helper. Psalm 54, 4. Our help is in the name of Elohim, Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth. Psalm 124, 8. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10, 8. In summary, based on all my years of scriptural and scientific research, here is the most helpful advice I have to give anyone. Keep prayerfully asking Yah, the helpology question. Adon Yahusha HaMashiach, 
What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? James 1.5 To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the H question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Oh, scripture taken from the New King James Version. I thought it was the NLT, but it was the New King James Version. Which again, I don't recommend any other version right now other than the Et Sefer. However, I do, there's other versions I recommend. I mean, let's say it like this. If I could only pick one version to recommend, it would be the Et Sefer. And again, as you may know, you can save 10% off the Et Sefer through Sefer.net by using the code David Yah. And I would get, uh, I believe, 10% of that would help me with my ministry. Um, but I do recommend the Hallelujah Scriptures. You can get those for free. But at the same time, you won't get the whole 87 books for free. So you won't have in one um, copy the 87 books. And I believe there were other books that were hidden and that we don't have access to or that some of them we have access to and they're polluted. So um, I also, you know, the Scriptures by Institute for Scripture Research is good. Um there's a few versions that are out that are, are good. Um, if you only have the King James Version, I'd read that. You know, I'd read whatever scripture I have. Um, at the same time, if I can only recommend one copy or one version, today, as it stands, based on my research, the Et Sefer. Um, that could change. If Yahuwah has someone come out with a more precise version, I will switch to it and recommend that. And then Yahuwah willing, I would re-record the whole thing, if given permission, to on YouTube. So I'm flexible. That's the thing. Yahuwah has taught me this wisdom. Life is all about being, it's all about change, really. And, and it's also about not change. Meaning, it's about Yahuwah, who does not change. And Yah's word which does not change. But in this fallen state we live in, in this world, it's ever changing. So the idea is we have to be willing to change to understand and discover truth and be willing to keep coming out of lies. If Yahuwah presents you with more truth, you need to be willing to come out of that lie that you are in completely and fully, immediately come out of it. And so that's what Yah has taught me to do, is to keep coming out of whatever things I learn is a lie, to be willing to confess that sin, come out of it, teach others about it, and then be willing to say, look, my whole ministry was based on this, but now it's not anymore. I'm going to switch because my ministry is based on truth. Whatever truth Yahuwah shows me, I want to be flexible to come out of that truth. Even if that means I recorded 1,700 videos of the Et Sefer, and now a new version comes out that's more helpful, I need to be willing to say, look, I don't even recommend that other stuff anymore. This is what I recommend today. And so that's what Yah has taught me. Now, chapter 3, the true meaning of life. The amazing secret you're about to discover is guaranteed to change your life forever. Are you a good person? Have you ever told a lie? So what does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything? So what does that make you? A thief. Yahusha said, anyone who even looks at a woman, a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5, 28. Have you ever looked at someone with lust? So what does that make you? An adulterer at heart. So far, if you've been honest with yourself, you've admitted you are a liar, thief, and an adulterer at heart. And we've only looked at three of Yah's Ten Commandments. And by the way, if you don't believe there is a Creator, or an El, or an Elohim, an Almighty One, remember, the Scriptures 
say. Only fools say in their heart. Rather, only fools say in their hearts, there is no God or there is no Yah. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. Psalm 14, 1. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. John 3.20. Yah's word says, everyone has sinned. We all for, fall short of Yah's glorious standard, Romans 3.23. It's your sins that have cut you off from Yah. Isaiah 59.2. Yah says, all people are mine to judge, both parents and children alike. And this is my rule. The person who sins is the one who will die. Ezekiel 18.4 Each person is destined to die once. Excuse me. And after that comes judgment. Hebrews 9.27 When you die and Yah judges you, will you be innocent or guilty of your sins? If you're honest with yourself, you know you'll be guilty. Will you deserve heaven or hell? Does that concern you? It should. Yahusha said, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Matthew 16, 26. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Proverbs 14, 12. Do you know what God or Yah did for you so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? He lovingly provided the only way for you to be completely forgiven. The good news, the Besara, is about the son of Yah. He was raised from the dead by the power of the Ruach HaKadesh. He is Yahusha HaMashiach. Our Adon Master. I am not ashamed of this good news about Yahusha HaMashiach. It is the power of Yah at work, saving everyone who believes. Romans 1, 3 through 4, and 16. We are made right with Yah by placing our belief in Yahusha HaMashiach. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Faith is the substance, rather. Uh, belief is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Hebrews 11.1 1. Faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Hamashiach. Romans 10.17 in these final days, Yah has spoken to us through his Son. Through the Son, Yah, Hua, created the universe. The Son radiates Yahuwah's own glory and expresses the very character of Yahuwah. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Hebrews 1, 2 through 3. By the way, as far as the universe, uni, una means one, and verse is something that is spoken, a sentence. One sentence. Yahuwah created everything through his one sentence that he spoke in Genesis. Well, Yahuwah created everything through the word, basically. Um, but here's the thing. I believe Satan has deceived us to believe that there are all of these things in the universe out there. I think if you study this out with prayer, you'll find that the earth is flat. We're not a spinning ball going around a thousand miles an hour. That there's, a, there's the Shamayim or heavens above us. There's a hell below us. And that we're here in the middle. We can't leave 
except through the door, Yahusha, or through death. And so, again, that's the sort of revelation or deprogramming that you'll have to spend time in prayer in. Um, but that's where I, what I believe. Time will tell who's right or who's wrong. Um, for in Hamashiach lives all the fullness of Yahuwah in a physical mankind body. Colossians 2.9 Yahusha Hamashiach is the visible image of the invisible Yahuwah. Yahusha existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through Yahusha, Yahuwah created everything in the heavenly realms and on the Aretz, or on earth. Everything was created through Yahusha and for Yahusha. Therefore, you were created by Yahusha and for Yahusha. By the way, Yahusha means I am he who saves, or I am your deliverer. And I think it's important to remind us that Yah means I am. Yahuwah means I am he who breathes life. Yahusha, I am he who saves. And then the Ruach HaKadosh, the dedicated breath. Yahusha existed before anything else, and Yahusha holds all creation together. Colossians 1, 15-17 There is only one Yah and one mediator who can reconcile Yahuwah and mankind. The man, Yahusha HaMashiach. 1 Timothy 2, 5 There is salvation in no one else. Yah has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Hamashiach suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to Yahuwah. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the Ruach. 1 Peter 3.18 Therefore Yahusha is able once and forever to save completely those who come to Yah through him. Hebrews 7.25 Not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. Ecclesiastes 7.20 The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of Yahuwah is eternal life through Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adon Master. Romans 6.23 Yet Yahuwah, with undeserved kindness, kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Yahusha HaMashiach when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For Yah presented Yahusha, rather, for Yahuwah presented Yahusha as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with Yah when they believe that Yahusha sacrificed his life shedding his blood Romans 3:25 through 20 rather 24 through 25 here's how the scriptures define love Yahuwah is love 1 John 4:8 love is patient and kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude it does not demand its own way it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith or belief, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. If we love one another, Yah lives in us. His love is made complete in us. 1 John 4.12 Yahuwah showed his great love for us by sending Hamashiach to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5.8 For Yahuwah loved the world so much that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in Yahusha will not perish but have eternal life. 
Yahuwah sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Yahusha. But anyone who does not believe in Yahusha has already been judged for not believing in Yahuwah's one and only Son. John 3, 16 through 18. Anyone who believes in Yahusha, yeah, rather, in Yahuwah's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under Yah's angry judgment. John 3, 36. Yahusha said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. I and the Father are one. John 10, 30. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. John eleven twenty five. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I tell you the truth. Unless you are born from above, you cannot see the kingdom of Yahuwah. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your sins. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Revelation 3, 19 through 20. Now turn away from your sins and turn to Yahuwah so that your sins may be wiped away. Acts 3.19 If you confess with your mouth that Yahusha is Adon, rather, if you confess with your mouth that Yahusha is Yahuwah, and believe in your heart that Yah raised him from the dead, you will be saved or delivered. Romans 10.9 Therefore, I prayerfully encourage you to make the most important decision of your entire life and ask Yahusha HaMashiach into your heart right now. If you're already a Christian, but you've strayed from the Master, Yahuwah says, My wayward children, come back to me, and I will heal your wayward hearts. Jeremiah 3.22 the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6.2 Would you like to invite Yahusha into your heart or rededicate yourself to Yahusha right now? Let's pray. Abba, Father, Yahuwah, please save me. I'm lost and I need your help. I believe your son, Yahusha, died for my sins, just as your word promises. He was buried and raised from the dead on the third day. Please send Yahusha's Ruach HaKadosh to live in my heart forever. Yahusha, you are now my Elohim, my Savior, and my friend. Thank you for loving me, dying for my sins, and giving me eternal life with you in the Shamaim. Please give me faith to trust and follow only you. Thank you, Yahuwah, in Yahusha's name. Amen. By the way, Amen is a Hebrew word, a Hebrew word that means it is true or let it be true. In summary, 
If you've just asked Yahusha into your heart, then the word of Yah promises you, one, Yahuwah has forgiven you. Yahusha HaMashiach has accepted you, Romans 15, 7. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness, 1 John 1, 9. Two, Yahusha now lives in you. Yahuwah has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, Galatians 4, 6. But people don't, rather, but people who don't have the Ruach can't receive these truths from Yah's Ruach. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it, for only those who have the Ruach can understand what the Ruach means. But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Hamashiach. 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 16. We know how dearly Yah loves us, because he has given us the Ruach HaKadosh to fill our hearts with his love. Romans 5, 5. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of Yah and that the spirit or Ruach of Yahuwah lives in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16 Christ or Hamashiach will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into Yah's love and keep you strong. Ephesians 3.17 3. You are now a born from above Mashiachim, follower of Mashiach, a follower of the way, a follower of Yah. Everyone who believes that Yahusha is Hamashiach has become a child of Yahuwah. 1 John 5.1 this means that anyone who belongs to HaMashiach has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. 2 Corinthians 5.17 For you have been born from above, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of Yah. 1 Peter 1.23 I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of Yahuwah, so that you may know you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13 In closing, the scriptures share Yahuwah's amazing secret to the true meaning of life. Yahusha is the key to your life. Deuteronomy 30.20 Rather, Yahusha HaMashiach. Living means living for Yahusha. Philippians 1.21 To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the Helpology question. Avaya. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Four, helpology beliefs. The word of Yah is obviously the most difficult writing men can read. The scripture is the book in more senses than one. It has been not only the most widely read, but also the most carefully read book of all. Mortimer J. Adler, author, How to Read a Book. And I would recommend that book, How to Read a Book. It's a good book. It teaches you actually how to think logically. and It's a good book. The Word of Yah is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit between joint and marrow. It exposes 
our innermost thoughts and desires. Hebrews 4.12 Yah's way is perfect. All the Adon's promises proved true. 2 Samuel 22.31 Or rather, all of Yahuwah's promises proved true. The very essence of your words is truth. All your just regulations will stand forever. Psalm 119, 160. Pray to God the Father. Rather, pray to Yahuwah the Father. Yahuwah, or rather, Yahusha the Son. Rather, praying to Yahuwah the Father. Yahuwah the Son, Yahusha HaMashiach, said, Make them Mashiachims set apart or dedicated by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. John 17, 17. Yahusha said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John fourteen sixteen. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. Matthew, Matit Yahu, 12, 31. You've been taught by the set-apart scriptures, or the dedicated writings from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Yahusha HaMashiach. All scripture is inspired by Yahuwah and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us we, when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Yahuwah uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17. Yah says, I send it, my word, out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Isaiah 55, 11. I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah. How glorious is our Elohim. He is the rock. His deeds are perfect. Everything he does is just and fair. He is a faithful Elohim who does no wrong. How just and upright is he. Deuteronomy 32, 3-4 Yahusha said, Go into all the world and preach the good news, the Besara, to everyone. Mark sixteen fifteen. Therefore, we believe, one, the Holy Bible or dedicated writings is the only Yahuwah-inspired, perfect, and authoritative word of Yah. Two, there is one Yah eternally existent. I'm going to say eternally existent as one in the Father, Yahuwah, the Son, Yahusha, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. Yet they are one. I believe they are the same. Three, in the deity or almightiness or God had or in the creator of Yahusha. His virgin birth, his sinless life, his miracles, his atoning death through his shed blood, his bodily resurrection, his ascension to the right hand of the Father, his present rule as the head of the called out ones, and his personal return in power and glory. Four, for the salvation of lost and sinful men and women, regenerate by the Ruach HaKadosh, 
Rather, regeneration by the Ruach HaKadosh is absolutely essential. Five, in the present help of the Ruach HaKadosh, by whose indwelling the follower of Yah is enabled to live a righteous life or a life of Yah. Six, in the resurrection of both the saved and the lost. The saved are saved to the resurrection of life in the Shamayim. And also the Shamayim, some of it's coming down here. So, And the lost are lost to the resurrection of damnation in an eternal hell. I have to reload this and see what happens. Sorry for that. Now, there's some, you know, is hell eternal? Would a loving God, you know, uh, keep people in torment forever? Um, I don't know. Time will tell. But I certainly don't want to risk it and be like, oh, I don't mind going to hell because it's going to be, you know, the punishment will end. Um, time will tell. It may be that the demons are eternally tortured or the devils, fallen angels, and that um, there's a time where we are in suffering, but then we're destroyed, or maybe that they're all destroyed, or it may be that there's eternal suffering. I don't know. Time will tell what's true. Um, as far as what I personally believe, I would say that it seems to me like Avaya is going to, um, there's going to be torment, and then I think he's going to throw it all into the lake of fire and destroy it. That's just what I see. So I don't know if it's true or not. I don't think that those are things that we should not fellowship over. Um, a lot of times I think, you know, in the scriptures, things are both. When people are like, oh, is it this or that? Oftentimes in scripture, you'll find it's both. Now looking down here, I see the scripture was from the New Living Translations. So, oh, but that's from this part. Okay, so we're going to finish up, but it's still got a little while to go. But this was very important. We were in the part about... Okay, so remember this. This part where I was reading, it was scripture taken from the New Living Translation. The other parts I was reading was the scripture was taken from the New King James Version. Now here we are at the beliefs before the page reloaded. And this is kind of, you know, like a statement of beliefs. There's the... Uh, the part we were on about hell, seven. In the spiritual unity of believers in our Adon, Yahusha Mashiach, with equality across race, gender, and class difference, from the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, I do not recommend them. I don't recommend evangelical Christianity. I believe there's a lot of truth in it, but it's going to lead you to deception. And those scriptures were taken from the New Living Translation. I would not recommend any religion of man. I don't recommend Christianity, Judaism, Islam. I recommend you have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with your Creator. Pour your heart out to Him. Confess your sins. Ask Him to come into your life, and He will. Study the scriptures, whichever scripture you have. Let him lead you into all truth. If I were to start with one scripture, I'd recommend the Ed Sefer. That's why I've recorded the whole thing. If that changes, I will, I'll be willing, re-record whatever new version he leads me to. Um, but up, up until now, as of today, I recommend the Ed Sefer wholeheartedly, without reserve. 
Um, number five, plan A. This chapter will evaluate three general principles that appear to be confirmed and reinforced by secular writings, that is, non-scriptural writings or worldly writings. One, planning can increase success. Two, communication can increase success. And three, publicity can increase success. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary simply defines success as a favorable or desired outcome. Principle one, planning can increase success. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Memory is past. It is finite. Vision is future. It is infinite. Vision is greater than history. Greater than baggage. Greater than the emotional scars of the past. Covey, 2004, page 71. When we consciously decide to set specific goals, then we are more likely to see the obstacles that stand between where we are now and where we would like to be. If we don't clearly set our own goals, then we will soon find ourselves spending our lives helping to achieve the goals of others. If we fail to plan, we are actually planning to fail by default. If you do not know where you are going, how will you ever get there? Goal setting simply equips an individual organiza or organization with the ability to make more effective decisions. This proactive outlook on life helps us to grow as constructive members of our family, organization, and society. As we make and keep commitments, even small commitments, we begin to establish an inner integrity that gives us the awareness of self-control and the courage to accept more of the responsibility of our own lives. Covey, 1989, page 92. Without a clearly defined mission or purpose for existence, the goals and plans that follow will be diluted and impotent. Great vision precedes great achievement. Every team needs a compelling vision to give it direction. A team without vision is, at worst, purposeless. At best, it is subject to the personal and sometimes selfish agendas of various teammates. Maxwell, 2003, page 160. This is not to say goals and plans need to be complex. On the contrary, the simplest way that works is usually the most helpful. Often the solution to a problem is so simple that thousands of people have looked at it without seeing it. When an agenda is clever and co or complicated, however, we should be suspicious. It probably won't work because it's not simple enough. Rise and Trout, 1981 page 237. Since YAH has given us the freedom to set helpful goals, it is our responsibility to choose awesome aims that have the potential to excite, inspire, and motivate us to healthy and massive action. The visionary leader thinks big, thinks new, thinks ahead, and most important, is in touch with the deep structure of Mankind Consciousness and Creative Potential. Peter Kostenbaum, Management Philosopher. Covey, 2004, page 67. We would be wise to set objectives that make us want to jump out of bed in the morning with wonderful anticipation. Like a child on Christmas Day, which Christmas is a pagan holiday I don't recommend. You have to think anyway, so why not think big? Donald Trump, Maxwell, 2003, page 62. And while wow, that was written before he became the president. Stephen Covey summarizes by probing the depths of our mankind souls. 
perhaps the most important vision of all, is to develop a sense of self, a sense of your own destiny, a sense of your unique mission and role in life, a sense of purpose and meaning. When testing your own personal vision, first ask yourself, does this vision tap into my voice, my energy, my unique talent? Does it give me a sense of calling, a cause worthy of my commitment? Acquiring such meaning requires profound personal reflection, asking deep questions and envisioning. Covey, 2004, page 72. And as long as you do that scripturally, you'll be fine. Principle two, communication can increase success. We communicate whenever we give or exchange information. We must keep in mind we are always potentially communicating something. Even when we are asleep, we are communicating to those who look at us that we are not awake. Our personal attitude, tone of voice, and body language often communicates much more than our words. Leadership is influence. People catch our attitudes just like they catch our colds by getting close to us. One of the most gripping thoughts to ever enter my mind centers on my influence as a leader. It is important that I process a great attitude, rather, possess a great attitude, not only for my own success, but also for the benefits of others. My responsibilities as a leader must always be viewed in light of the many, not just myself. Maxwell, 1993, page 105. Moment by moment, we can each individually make the conscious decision to be a communicating catalyst for positive change. The habit of responding to the inner desire to make a difference, to matter, to extend our influence to the people and causes we most value, all begins with the mindset or attitude, a choice. The choice to use the voice of influence. Covey, 2004, page 128. A leader who can effectively communicate and represent a company is priceless. An, out an outstanding communicator gets attention and lends credibility to an organization as well as their products and services. The brand needs to reflect a clear purpose and should be represented, rather represented, by a visible, daring, or determined leader. Lindstrom, 2005, page 193. From a, from a secular perspective, for example, think of Oprah Winfrey, Donald Trump, or Martha Stewart. These individuals have all been very daring and highly effective communicators. Even after being put in prison for making poor choices, Stewart continued her successful communication through a TV show similar to Trump's The Apprentice. Of course, I don't recommend those people today. But again, it's said from a secular or non-scriptural perspective. Communication can be one key to success. But if an organization has the most helpful products and services in the entire world, yet no one knows about them, and they are practically equivalent to not knowing, or rather, to not existing at all. On the other hand, if a company has poor quality products and services, then they can communicate all they want, but it won't do a bit of good in the long run. Eventually, the truth will be known, and people will choose to invest their time and money elsewhere. So, helpful planning and preparation, followed by massive communication, is a more effective formula. Furthermore, word of mouth advertising will always be one of the least expensive yet most powerful forms of promotion. Here's a simple rule to success on the web. Make your site useful and then tell people about it. Kent 2004, page 44. Moreover, the best way to succeed in business is to run such a wonderful operation that your loyal and satisfied customers will brag about your good and services you either goods and services far and wide. Phillips and Raspberry, 2003, page one. Principle three. Publicity 
can increase success. One of the most powerful and cost-effective ways to let the world know about your organization is through free publicity. If you can create a product or service that is truly newsworthy, then you may never have to spend one red cent on paid advertising. News organizations can literally get so many people talking about your products and services that you'll have more customers than you can handle. Then, once you are well known, sending out a periodic press release may be all that's needed to help launch any new goods or services. The most efficient way to generate exposure is to get word of mouth started skillfully and maintain it with artful diligence. Le Mer, 2003, page 4. Microsoft Corporation gets an amazing amount of free publicity whenever they come out with a new version of their operating system, simply because it truly is newsworthy to many people. Free publicity can be found in the media almost all the time. So, another key to success is to identify what has been effective for others. Then, adapt the entire process to benefit your organization. Think publicity. Publicity must become a mindset, a constant and instinctive focus in your life. Always look for opportunities to publicize your products or services. When you come across other promotions, always ask, how could it work for me? Levinson, Frischman and Lublin, 2000, 2002, pages 233 through 234. Conclusion. This chapter evaluated three general principles that appear to be confirmed and reinforced by secular writings. One, planning can increase success. Two, communication can increase success. Three, publicity can increase success. When integrated together, these three keys can help open the doors to prosperity and power for any organization. Each process is a synergistic step that could increase the likelihood of exponential growth and influence for any group or cause. To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the H question. Abba ya, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Five, plan B. This chapter will also evaluate the same three general principles that also appear to be confirmed and reinforced by Christian writings. One, planning can increase success. Two, communication can increase success. And three, publicity can increase success. Principle one, planning can increase success. Yah makes plans. The scriptures themselves is a partial revelation of the Creator's dedicated plan for His creation. We are created in His image. So, we would be wise to follow His perfect example. Of course, since we are not perfect, we will never be able to create a perfect plan on our own. Therefore, we always need to depend on Yah for his all-knowing guidance. The scriptures advise, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not wait Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3. As one communicator notes, hence he is to wait for it. Inscribing it on tablets, metaphorically, as a permanent reminder and witness, Devries, 1971, page 495. The fact we are imperfect reinforces our need even more to carefully consider our planning. Do our plans come from his Ruach HaKadosh living inside us? from our flesh, or a combination of both. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of Yah, who gives to all liberally and without approach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in belief, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. James 1, 4 through 6. At least if we test our mankind goals against the touch, t touch stone of Scripture, we can be fairly confident whether or not our plans are aligned with the Adonai's perfect will or with Yahweh's perfect will. Within the Scripture, you will find the answer to all of life's opportunities and problems. It contains all of the principles found in every other book ever written about success and happiness. From the wellspring of the Creator, stimulating wisdom will never run dry. Bland, 1972, page 15. The dedicated writings equate our success with Elohim-like goals and planning. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law, the Torah, the loving instruction. Proverbs 29, 18. Personal and professional aims need to be balanced and integrated together to be truly healthy and effective. Then, they need to be powered by sincere belief that Yah will provide in his time according to his will. Your plan of action should include detailed goals and plans for both you and your family. They cannot be separated. When completing the plan, you should commit yourself to the following. One, be perfectly honest with yourself. Two, dare to think big. Three, take action. And four, believe in your plan. Bland, 1972, page 142. If one's goals do not come to fruition, then let the results be an important lesson learned. Perhaps the plans were not of Yahuwah. May Yah rescue us from self-centered thinking. May we have no higher goal than to see someone think more highly of our Father, our King. Lucato, 2004, pages 145 through 6. Principle 2. Communication can increase success. As noted from the secular perspective, the main way to succeed in any endeavor is to effectively communicate with other people in the world. But from the Christian point of view, one is empowered to actually communicate and consult with the creator of the universe for advice and guidance. The secret to Yahusha's success in ministry was a lifestyle of prayer. Monroe, 2002, page 109. So as born from above, followers of the Messiah, it is foundational we first communicate with Yah through prayer, His Word, and His Ruach HaKadosh living inside us, before we should expect to truly succeed in communicating with other people in the world. In Matthew 6.10, the Son of Yahuwah teaches us the essential principle of submission to the Father. The recognition of thy will be done em emphasizes the idea that prayer is is to bring about the conformity of the will of the believer to the will of Yah. Prayer is an act of spiritual expression which brings us into conformity to the very nature and purpose of Yahuwah. Hinson, or Hinderson, 1999, page 1184. We would all save much time, money, and pain if we first talked to the well, if we first talked to Yahuwah, instead of trying to figure out all our, our problems in our own limited wisdom and strength. I continually prayed, Yahuwah, tell me what to do. Show me what steps to take. Guide me where to go. And Yah answered those prayers. He spoke to my heart saying, 
Just be in my presence. Just pitch my tent with you. I mean, just pitch your tent with me and let me pitch my tent with you. I'll make things happen the way they are supposed to. Oh, Martian. Hmm. Or I think it's Omardian. 2001, page 9. We tend to forget Yah created us so we might fellowship with him in all that we do for his esteem or glory. Yah created us for work so that by consciously relying on his power and consciously shaping the world after his excellence, we might be satisfied in him and he might be glorified or esteemed in us. Piper, 2003, page 142. Once we are in his will, then through the power of the Ruach Kakadesh, we will have supernatural wisdom to impact the world and help lead people to Yahusha Hamashiach, the Adon. Furthermore, similar to the original 12 apostles or students or followers of Yahuwah or of Yahusha, we are likely to see and experience exponential growth when we rely on his awesome power as we communicate with others. Principle three, publicity can increase success. One commentator remarks on publicity in Proverbs 8, 22 through 31. Like a prophet, wisdom takes her stand in public places and cries out to passers-by to accept her counsel and reproof. Street corners, squares, and the city gates were the centers of the juridical, business, and social life of the city and form an appropriate setting for wisdom to make herself heard. Wisdom bears on all human activity or mankind's activity and has to compete not only with cynicism and willful folly, but also with the distractions of everyday life. Aitken, 2001, page 407. As Christians, or followers of Yah, we are called by Yah to represent Mashiach, in the world. This includes the marketplace of ideas. Pardon me. Just getting my cord here for the uh, battery charger here. So, the marketplace of ideas. Business and politics. So, once we have been privately prepared through Yah's word and know what to do, then it is our duty, our godly duty, which I don't even know what the word for godly would be, our Elohim-like, or it is our duty given by Yah, to do what we know publicly. Ultimately, our actions will speak much louder than our words, and society will eventually see clear messages that cannot be ignored. Yah isn't limited to natural, mankind ways of doing things. If you will trust Yah and keep a good attitude, staying faithful right where you are and not getting in a hurry and trying to force things to happen. Yah will promote you at the right time in your due season. Osteen, 2004, page 198. And I do not recommend Joel Osteen. 
So it would appear we should not be in a hurry to write and send out our own press releases, unless Yah specifically calls us to do so. In Yahuwah's timing, he will prepare, promote, and publicize us along with our organization's products and services. At the same time, when Yahuwah does call us to action, we should not let the fear of the unknown or the fear of rejection discourage us from realizing our full Masha, Mashiachim potential in society or followers of the Messiah or followers of Yah. Sidney Smith, an 18th century minister, once wrote, A great deal of talent is lost in the world for want of a little courage. Every day sends their graves, rather sends to their graves, obscure men and women whom timid, timidity prevented from making a first effort, who, if they could have been induced to begin, would in all probability have gone great length in the career of fame. Mandino, 1995, page 165. I wouldn't want fame, by the way. I believe that fame is given by the god of this world, Satan. Um, but that is what it is. If Yah wants to give you fame, then he will. But it's usually not done any way that the world sees people become famous. However, we can be encouraged by this simple truth. It is never too late to be publicly used by Yah. We have, rather, we all have any number of visions and ideas when we are young, but sooner or later, we find that we have no power to make them real. We cannot do the things we long to do, and we are apt to settle down to the visions and ideals uh, as rather, to settle down to the visions and ideals as dead. And Yah has to come and say, Arise from the dead! When the inspiration of Yah does come, it comes with such miraculous power that we are able to arise from the dead and do the impossible thing. Chambers, 1935, page 50. Conclusion. Based on Christian writings, this chapter also evaluated three general principles. One, planning can increase success. Two, communication can increase success. Three, publicity can increase success. Rather, increase success. The findings support that these three steps will likely increase an organization's popularity and success. However, the Christian perspective is unique in realizing that planning, communication, and publicity will be most effective only when we first trust and rely on Yahusha, or rather, on the Adon, Yahusha HaMashiach, to guide us completely. As the scriptures confirm, trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author of Helpology, P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the H question. Ava Yahua. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Scripture taken from the New King James Version. There, seven references. You can read those on your own. Okay. 
And now we go on to so many people are just only impressed when there's references. Well, in some ways, I'm the same way. I'm really only impressed when there's references to the scriptures. <laughs> so I guess you can't fault the world for thinking in those terms. It also does prove that a lot of research was done and that you can think clearly and logically. And I guess that's impressive to a lot of people too, but. Eight, Appendix A, press release. Helpology.org, Christian Ministry, aims to help love Jesus. Nashville, 30, or September 30th, 2011. Can a Christian website help save souls? Helpology.org is a Christian ministry on a revolutionary mission to lead people to Jesus. Helpology.org's foundational scripture verse is, Our help is in the name of the Lord. Interesting how we don't even know the, name's Lord, the Lord's name there, do we? In the name of Yahweh, Psalm 124.8, NKJV. The ministry's mission is to glorify God as we help love Jesus, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with as many people as possible by prayerfully answering the question, Lord Jesus, what's the most helpful and simplest way that works? James 1.5, NKJV. I can see a lot of errors in that right there. For one, I believe that the word God is short for the third fallen angel revealed in Enoch. Gadriel, the God of this world, one of the gods of this world, or headed by Mastema or Shatan, Satan. But here's the thing. Our money in America says, in God we trust. And I believe that in our country, it is in God, Riel, that this country trusts as one of Satan's fallen angels. So I don't want to glorify God. I don't pray to God. I pray to Yah. I want to glorify Yah. I don't want to glorify God, Riel, or a fallen angel. Some people may disagree with that, but that's fine. You don't have to agree with me. Research it on your own. Um, but once you know the truth, to declare and use the, the word God, to me, it is satanic. But that's me. I've done the research. I, I'm at shalom with that. I don't want to glorify God. I want to glorify Yah. Um, as we help love Jesus, no, help love Yahusha. Or I would say help love Yah to share the Besara, or good news, of Yahusha HaMashiach with as many people as possible by prayerfully answering the H question. Avaya. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? Helpology.org features a purposeful, Christ-centered logo, a red, white, and blue heart, with a white cross in its center. The heart symbolizes Yah, the Father's love, and the cross is for Yah, the Son, our Adon, or Master and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Living in our hearts, once we're saved by faith, in his dedicated name, set apart or dedicated name, White is for Yah, the Ruach HaKadosh, living in our hearts and surrounding us with His love. Red is for the blood of Yahusha, which washes away our sins when we turn from our sins and put our belief in Yahusha HaMashiach alone. And blue is for the water of baptism, which is an outward sign of an inward change. The following verses describe the biblical meaning or scriptural meaning of the logo. Yah has sent forth the Ruach of his Son into your hearts. Galatians 4, 6. The love of Yah has been poured out into our hearts by the Ruach HaKadosh. 
Romans 5, 5, that Hamashiach may dwell in your hearts through belief, being rooted and grounded in love. Ephesians 3, 17. When you donate to the Helpology.org ministry, you help create Christian jobs, and 10% of all proceeds are given to various evangelical Christian ministries to help share the good news of Jesus Christ with as many people as possible to help fulfill the Great Commission commanded by Jesus. I don't, none of that I do anymore with any income. Yah leads me what to do on a case-by-case -case basis. Helpology.org was founded by Dave Christian, a Bible-believing evangelical Christian. Christian's vision is to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by creating the most helpful service of all time. For more information, visit Helpology.org. Okay, that's enough of that. Appendix B, Helpology, Bible verses. Behold, Yahuwah is my helper. Psalm 54.4. Our help is in the name of Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth. Psalm 124.8. Go into all the world and preach the Besara, good news, to every creature. Mark 16.15. With men, this is impossible, but with Yahuwah, all things are possible. Matthew 19.26. But without belief, it is impossible to please Yah, for he who comes to Yahuwah must believe that Yahuwah is, and that Yah is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.16 The Adon, rather, the Elohim, Yahuwah said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Genesis 2.18 Yahusha said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. John 14.16 Yahusha said, When the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Ruach of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. John fifteen twenty six. Yahusha said, The Helper, the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. John fourteen twenty six. The helpless commits himself to Yah. Yahuwah is the Helper of the Fatherless. Psalm 10, 14. Hear, O Yahuwah, and have mercy on me. Yahuwah, be my helper. Psalm 30, 10. So we may boldly say, Yahuwah is my helper. I will not fear. Hebrews 13, 6. Peace. Shalom, shalom to you, and shalom to your helpers, for your Yah helps you. Trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Yahusha. Or rather, acknowledge Yahuwah and he shall direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5-6 Believe in the name of Yahweh's Son, Yahusha HaMashiach, and love one another. 1 John 3.23 Whatever you do, do all to the glory of Yah. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Scripture taken from the New King James Version. Chapter 9 Endorsements Your story has moved me like no other. Rosalie Zerbo And that is actually my mother's sister. But that quote is true. She did say that. She texted me that one day. I appreciate Dave Christian's Helpology. He has an excellent job putting together useful websites that can assist anyone 
looking for helpful insights and answers to life's problems and challenges. Dr. Brian Cluth, best-selling author, 40 Days Spiritual Journey to a More Generous Life, and founder of GenerousLife.org. I don't even recommend GenerousLife.org anymore. I appreciate another informative site. Where else can I get that sort of information designed in such a perfect way? I have a project that I am at the moment working on, and I've been on the lookout for such info, Delma Segoviano. By the way, if you Google Helpology uh, and put the word web starts in there, web starts Helpology, I believe, maybe I'll put a link below. I think I, there's an active site still that has all of these um, links that I researched and recommended back then. Um, I wouldn't say all of them are good anymore, but it'll show you the body of work that I was doing. I'm too busy now to, to, I've tried to delete it and I can't. Yeah, I just told me to leave it up and do this through David Yah on YouTube. Hi, Dave. What an awesome life story and testimony unto the power, love, grace, and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Adon Master, and... Hamashiach, Yahusha, Hamashiach. It is true that the steadfast love of Elohim or Yahuwah never ceases, and his mercies are new every morning. Every morning. Thanks for sharing your wonderful yet painful story with the world that it might make a difference in someone's life. Be Baruch. Henrietta Thomas. Dave, you contacted me a few years ago. I'm glad to see you're, see you're still sharing Yahusha's Besorah, good news. Life is tough at times, and it is one of these times for you. I will be praying for you, Myra Brown. I just noticed that you were a new follower of mine on Twitter. For some reason, I decided to go check out your website. I don't do this with all my new follow with all new followers. I am moving away from the internet marketing industry, which I have worked in for about 12 years, and moving toward a Christian outreach instead. Thank you for sharing your story, Kimberly Inman. A testimony to prove that perfect love drives out fear. We love because he loved us. Rather, we love because he he first loved us. Keep sharing the good news, brother. Jay Wheeler. Very inspirational story. Teaching others to get back up and try again. And that Yah is the answer to the questions we are searching for. I will share this with those in our local jail, Wheezy. Dearly beloved son, we are proud of you. Finding your life's meaning to know, love, and serve Yah our Creator, through Yahusha HaMashiach. You've always been a loving son and brother. You've always had a loving heart for everyone. But trying to be rich and have it all, meaning the big house, car, and material things, was shown to you by Mashiach to be meaningless. Amen. <laughs> Love forever. Patricia Ficini, a.k.a. Mama Ficini. That's my mother's quote. <laughs> Uh, please post your comments and questions at helpology.org. Thank you. I would say now, please post your comments and questions beneath this video at, on David Yah YouTube. Chapter 10, share this ebook with others. And now I would say share the reading of this ebook with others through this YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this ebook, please share it with others. You can do so by clicking on the appropriate button below. Also, please leave a comment on David Yah YouTube. I would generally like to hear from you. I will use the feedback of my uh, re readers to improve the next edition. I don't think there's going to be a next edition, but who knows? I'll be willing. To your future, Dave Christian, founder and author, Helpology. P.S. If I can help you in any way, just let me know. P.P.S. Keep answering the question. What's the most helpful and simplest way that works? That's it.
Okay, so now that that's done, let's close in prayer. Abba Yahweh. Abba Yah. Thank you for your love, your favor, your mercy. Anyone hearing the sound of my voice and who hasn't accepted you into their life yet, repented of their sins, Abba, Yahweh, I ask that you would convict their, their hearts and let them see the destruction that's coming their way. That they'll be separated from you for eternity. And they'll be missing out on eternal life. So I ask that you would give them wisdom, Abba, to accept you into their life. And that all glory and honor and esteem would be given to you, and to your name, Yahuwah. Our Elohim, Yahuwah, is one. We ask this in Yahusha's name. Amen. Okay, that's it for today. Shalom. Or let's say, uh, well, shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom means completeness. Shalom. And hallelujah. That means you follow the way of I am. And I leave you with this scripture verse. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Goodbye.